makes a difference in my life. You're listening to Christian 107.3. Stay tuned for another Campbell University sports presentation on your flagship home for fighting camel athletics. Christian 107.3, WCLN-FM. After a 58-year absence, Campbell football is finally on the air. And your exclusive countdown to kickoff coverage comes your way on the Bojangles Tailgate Show. On today's edition of the Bojangles Tailgate Show, an in-depth look at both teams, highlights, scores from across the country and the Pioneer League, and the voice of the Fighting Camels, Robert Harper, visits with Campbell head coach, Dale Steele. The Bojangles Tailgate Show is brought to you in part by Carly C's IGA, Campus Habitat, Bojangles, Triangle Orthopedic Associates, and team physician Dr. William Haig, McPhail's Pharmacy, J.E. Wobble and Sons Hardware, The Trophy Case, McDonald's, Allstate Insurance, and Agent Darrell Wilson, Western Sizzlin', Southeastern Interiors, Sunshine Car Care, and Williams Printing of Fayetteville. Now to the field, here is the voice of the Fighting Camels, Robert Harper. The talk in the creek has always been about its eventual return. And after the announcement by Campbell President Dr. Jerry Wallace nearly two and a half years ago, all calendars in and around Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, have had August 30th, 2008 circled and nothing other than Campbell Orange. Today is Dale Steele and his Fighting Camels prepared to host a relatively new program in Birmingham Southern. A capacity crowd, and maybe even then some, is expected to kick off what many hope is a triumphant return for Campbell University to the gridiron. We welcome everyone to Campbell University Football Stadium at Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, for what will certainly be an historic event. I'm Robert Harper, and I am very honored to be providing the play-by-play -play all year long as the Camels return to the field. Joining me in the booth and providing the analysis is Coach Mickey Bridgers, and Devin Swartz will be along with updates on scores from around the country back in the Sunshine Car Care Studios. We're going to step aside for our first break. When we return, we drive further into the events of the day. You're listening to the Bojangles Tailgate Show on the Campbell University Radio Network. Bojangles knows tailgaters. Before you even get to the game, there can be a vicious throwdown. Everybody fighting over what to get, how much to get. That's why Bojangles, home of the original and best tailgate special, has expanded their lineup so there's plenty of options. Starting lineup, the original tailgate special. Eight pieces of Cajun fried chicken, two picnic-sized fixins, four made from scratch buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of iced tea. Or upsize to the Super Tailgate Special. Twelve pieces of chicken, three picnic-sized fixins, six buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of tea. Still not enough? Let's call in the big guy. The new Jumbo Tailgate Special. Twenty pieces of Cajun fried chicken, four picnic-sized fixins, a dozen made-from-scratch biscuits, and a gallon of iced tea. And if you like your chicken off the bone, there's the Supreme Tailgate Special that includes 12 whole-breast tenderloin fillets. The great debate over where the tailgate is over. Everybody can agree on Bojangles. It's more than delicious. It's tradition. Triangle Orthopedics, team physicians for the Fighting Camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. Let's face it, mealtime can be anything but relaxing to the kids around. Why not give yourself a break and bring the gang to Western Sizzlin'? We love kids, which is why Western Sizzlin' makes it a priority to have tons of kids' meal options. Oh, and steak lover, Western Sizzlin' serves nothing but the best. USDA choice, Western Sizzlin', 1810, West Cumberland Street in Dunn. And just think, after you've enjoyed your meal, the mess is on our house.
fans, are you looking for that perfect tailgate special? Well, Bojangles has just the meal for you. Stop by your local Bojangles restaurant before the Camels take the field to make the most of each and every tailgate. Bojangles, your one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridgers live back at Campbell University Football Stadium in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. The fans are now filing in, Mickey. It, we talked about it during the break. We've talked about it before the broadcast. This has certainly been a fe festive atmosphere for the Fighting Camels as they prepare for their first ball game in 58 years. I know it's exciting for everyone involved. What's it mean to be a part of this as, as a former coach and as a former administrator? Well, Robert, this is the first time that I've ever been involved in a program that has started from scratch. And I am so impressed with what the athletic director, Stan Williamson, the alumni, the athletic department, the president of the university, what everybody's done to bring football back. And it's very exciting for me. And uh, I just feel like uh, somebody needs to pinch me. I'm not sure I'm, I'm really here. Well, it certainly is. It is going to be certainly a very, very big atmosphere uh, for the Fighting Camels, and certainly one that I think the fans here in the stands are excited to be a part of. Now let's talk a little X's and O's. Birmingham Southern, a relatively new program as well. This is only their second season, playing at the Division Three level of the NCAA. They were 1-7 and seven according to the NCAA a year ago, 3-7 and seven with the schedule that they played. What does Birmingham Southern bring to the table that maybe Campbell's going to have some problems with? Well, I think offensively you'll find that the quarterback, Joe Thigpen, is very exciting. He was probably 60 to 70 percent of their offense last year. Very successful. Uh, in four games last year, he completed 20 passes or more. Uh, they have a, um, an all-conference newcomer of the year last year in Walter Arrington. So offensively, Joe Thigpen is going to spread the ball around. He's a, a dual threat as a runner and as a passer. I think defensively, uh, Campbell's going to have to really be on their toes and cover all the areas, make sure they don't give Joe Thickpin any opportunities for a quick strike. Let's talk a little bit about the Camels offensively. Matt Milano gets to call as a starter, even though we expect to see Wesley Snow at some point in this first half calling the plays for Campbell. But what does Milano bring to the table that caused, obviously, Dale Steele to make that move? Well, I think it was a tough competition at quarterback with Wesley Snow and Matt Milano. I think Volano has a little more experience as far as the uh, maybe college experience, uh, playing with another school, has transferred from the University of Connecticut. I think he's going to be the guy that Dale Steele expects to be the leader of this team uh, at this time. Um, we know that uh, Campbell has a very strong offensive line. We watched him in practice. We feel like that's a strength. We feel like Matt Volano is going to be able to control pass uh, just the way that uh, you know, Campbell feels like they can rush the ball. Well, it's certainly going to be an interesting contest. We're going to sit down and talk to Coach Dale Steele when we return here at the Campbell University Radio Network. For over 25 years, McPhail's Pharmacy has served Campbell University and our surrounding communities with the professional care and comfort that you have come to expect from our team of dedicated professionals. McPhail's Pharmacy, located in the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington or 105 East H Street in Irwin, combines quality, dependability, and state-of-the-art systems in order to bring you the best in pharmaceutical services. Please stop by and see us at one of our two convenient locations or visit us online at McPhail'sPharmacy.com. Bojangles knows tailgaters. Before you even get to the game, there can be a vicious throwdown. Everybody fighting over what to get, how much to get. That's why Bojangles, home of the original and best tailgate special, has expanded their lineup so there's plenty of options. Starting lineup, the original tailgate special. Eight pieces of Cajun fried chicken, two picnic-sized fixins, four made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of iced tea. Or upsize to the super tailgate special. Twelve pieces of chicken, three picnic-sized fixins, six buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of tea. Still not enough? Let's call in the big guy. The new Jumbo Tailgate Special. 20 pieces of Cajun fried chicken, four picnic-sized fixins, a dozen made-from-scratch biscuits, and a gallon of iced tea. And if you like your chicken off the bone, there's the Supreme Tailgate Special that includes 12 whole-breast tenderloin fillets. The great debate over where the tailgate is over. Everybody can agree on Bojangles. It's more than delicious. It's tradition. Carly C's IGA has always been a proud supporter of Campbell University and the Fighting Camels. The Carly C's IGA is also proud of all 12 of its hometowns.
from Lillington to Fayetteville, from Spring Lake to Benson, Carly C's IGA has always been the store big enough to serve you, yet small enough to know you. We have always and will continue to bring you the biggest name brands at the lowest possible prices. Stop by one of our 12 locations and see why we always say Carly C's IGA is hometown proud. You're listening to Fighting Camel Football on the Campbell University Radio Network. We'll be right back after this local break on Christian 107.3 WCLN. In honor of Jan's 100th anniversary, we're offering Saturn buyers the same employee discount we offer Saturn employees. So you can save big on the Saturn Aura, the midsize sports sedan the National Post calls the best-looking midsize sedan on the market. Save even more with its impressive EPA-estimated 30 miles per gallon highway. Or get the discount on the Saturn View, the compact crossover that's also available on a hybrid, and that Cars.com calls one of the most aggressively styled SUVs on the road. Or save on the fuel-efficient Saturn Astra, which offers an EPA-estimated 32 miles per gallon highway. So come in now for the GM 100th anniversary sales event at your local Saturn retailer or visit Saturn.com where for a limited time everyone gets the employee discount. You pay what we pay and not a cent more. Rethink Saturn. In celebration of GM's 100th anniversary, everyone gets the Saturn employee discount. You pay what Saturn employees pay, not a cent more. Available on all 08 models at Saturn of Fayetteville. Take delivery by September 2nd. Go to SaturnofFayetteville.com for details. Time now for the Carly C's IGA pregame talk with head coach Dale Steele. Here is the voice of the Fighting Camels, Robert Harper, with Coach Dale Steele. Coach, your team just about 20 minutes away from kickoff as you prepare for Birmingham Southern. It's the first game in 58 years. I promise we'll get to some X's and O's here in just a moment. But what emotions run through your mind as you see the guys warming up today and as you get prepared for kickoff, which, as I just mentioned, is about 20 minutes away. Well, you know, I think one of the things that runs through your mind is obviously we're a little bit uh, nervous and anxious to, to get started. We need to find out where we are as a football team after a year, and this will be the first test to, to see what we need to do to improve. They say your most improvement comes between your first and your second game. It's, uh, it's time to play one so we get to, to, to improve from there. Coach, you've been preparing for this game for a while, but as fans make their way into the stadium, as they get prepared to watch this team play, what are they going to see in a Dale Steele team that they're going to remember as they head throughout the season? Well, we hope that we're a disciplined football team. Uh, we hope that, uh, that we don't uh, hurt ourselves. Uh, we want to be able to go out and play the game as hard as we can and uh, at the same time uh, not, not uh, you know, hinder ourselves by making mistakes. Uh, uh, you know, we know we're not going to be mistake-free, but uh, you have to eliminate those mistakes that hurt the football team. Coach, you decided to, stat, to, to start Matt Milano. He is a young man that transferred in from the University of Connecticut where he was a preferred walk-on, but you did say that Wesley Snow would play. Talk us through the decision-making process when it comes to picking that quarterback. Well, there were a lot of different things. I think that uh, one of the things that uh, allowed us to, uh, to pick Matt or, or you know, inspired us to pick Matt was that uh, you know he understands the speed of the game having been in a, in a program where that uh, uh, you know he played against the Big East defense every day. Uh, the other thing was that uh, you know what we're going to face this week Matt was a little bit better suited uh, to to attack that that style of uh, defense. Uh, you know West will play because West is certainly on that right. He knows the offense very well. Uh, we'll put him in there. Uh, actually, he's had a really, really good week of practice this week, and uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens once we start the game. Coach, you prepare for an offense on the other side of the football that will spread you out. They're going to do a lot of different things to try to move it around, and while they're not particularly big on the offense or even the defensive front, they're going to rely on that speed a lot. Talk about the offense, how you defend it with the group that you have. Well, you know, they're going to spread you out over the field and, uh, and use their speed uh, to, to try to isolate you one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, so what that you know, what that means that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to play more skilled players. Uh, you know, our nickel and our dime package will be a, be a lot more involved in what we do today uh, to, to defend this football team. And they do a lot of different things out of it. They not only run the football out of it, uh, they'll show you some option out of it. Uh, they throw the ball very quickly. Uh, and uh, they try to make short throws and, and break tackles. And, uh, and certainly uh, their speed allows them to make those kind of plays. Coach, uh, as we wind down this interview, as you get prepared for kickoff, what does your team have to do 
in order to make a special day even a little bit more special for those folks that showed up with a victory? Well, I think it, it, first off, we have to go out and uh, you know protect the football on offense. So that's really going to be an important thing for us. So we're going to have to check our opportunities as they come offensively. Defensively, we're going to have to defend the field and not give up big plays. Uh, and the other thing is that we're going to have to we're going to have to win the kicking game. Uh, when you're in this type of football game where the two football teams know very little about one another and uh, it's going to be a you know a chess match. Uh, I think that the importance of special teams uh, becomes all that more predominant. Well, Coach, we certainly appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck against the Panthers today. We look forward to talking to you after the game. Folks, we're going to step aside take a break. When we come back, we check in with the schedules from around the rest of the Pioneer League and also some scores from the top 25 here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Campus Habitat is a premier student-only apartment complex located directly across from Campbell University. At Campus Habitat, you will find an apartment designed with your college experience in mind. Our apartments are available fully furnished and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. Don't you love cold winter nights wrapped up in your favorite blanket with a good book or with that special person? Hearing the crackle and feeling the warmth of your fireplace. Wait, there's only one thing wrong with this picture. You don't have a fireplace. Complete your home this year with the new Heatmaster fireplace from J.E. Womble & Sons, including mantle, firebox, blower, and gas logs. J.E. Womble & Sons also carries larger models, 36, 42, and 48-inch vent-free fireplaces. They're available with many options, like remote control, wall switches, thermostats, cabinet mantles, and many different styles. And installation is done by J.E. Womble & Sons. So go ahead, imagine yourself this winter curled up in front of your brand new Heatmaster fireplace and get down to J.E. Womble & Sons and the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington. Did you know that regular oil changes will only add miles to your engine? That's right. Changing your engine oil regularly will help lubricate the engine, minimize friction, and carry away excessive heat, all of which will lead to greater fuel efficiency. Stop by Sunshine Car Care in Lillington today to get your oil checked and learn what else you can do to increase your fuel mileage. Sunshine Car Care, 1643 North Main Street, Lillington, 910-893-8374. Sunshine Car Care in Lillington is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. You're listening to Fighting Camel Football on the Campbell University Radio Network. We'll be right back after this local break on Christian 107.3 WCLN. Hello, I'm Gary Brown, General Sales Manager at Power Swing Chevrolet. Since 1961, Power Swing Chevrolet has been serving Cumberland and surrounding counties. Many of our staff has been with us for over 20 years. A staff, a name that you can trust. Low overhead, the left is still for us. I know that gas is still a big concern for many. Chevy has eight models that get 30 miles per gallon or better, like Chevy Cobalt at 36, or Aveo at 34, or the all-new Tahoe Hybrid, an impressive 22 miles per gallon city. And Chevrolet has just announced the year-end model clearance event. Zero percent on many models including the Corvette. Or up to $10,000 off on Chevy Tahoes and Suburbans. Or if it's a pre-owned you're looking for we have over 100 in stock. Toyotas, Hondas, and GM certified with rates as low as 2.9. We service what we sell. Before you buy anywhere else come to Power Swing Chevrolet and experience the difference our people make. 4709 Bragg Boulevard, just one mile off base beyond Santa Fe Drive. Or visit us on the web at pschevy.com. Power Swing Chevrolet at American Revolution. So your child is ready for preschool. You need the confidence that what they bring home in both education and value. Welcome to the Sunshine Car Care Studio. I'm Devin Swartz. We'll send it back to Bowie's Creek, North Carolina for the rest of the Bojangles Tailgate Show. After a look at scores and schedules from around the country, we'll start off in the Pioneer League. We had one game last or Thursday night. Chris Creighton got his first win in his first game as head coach of the Drake Bulldogs, defeating Upper Iowa 17-13. The Bulldogs started off quite sluggish, trailing 10-0 in the second quarter. Um, trailing 10-0 in this first 20 minutes and then only picking up two first downs. But two defensive plays in the second quarter woke up the Bulldogs. Tim Harvey's interception led to Drake's first touchdown, and Spencer Cade performed a very rare feat, stripping the ball from a punter. 
That play led to a touchdown two plays later and a 14-10 lead at halftime, a lead they never relinquished on route to a 17-13 win. A Pioneer League game was also played last night. San Diego ran the football championship subdivision's longest home winning streak to 25 games with a 40-22 victory against future PSL member Maris at Torero Stadium. First-year quarterback Seb Trujillo threw four touchdowns in his first collegiate start, completing 16 of 23 passes for 191 yards. Senior running back J.T. Rogan caught the game's first touchdown, a 29-yard catch, but would leave the game due to an injury later in the first quarter and did not return. And now for today's action in the Pioneer League, Birmingham Southern and Campbell is the only early afternoon game, and kickoff is just minutes away right here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Later today, the Jacksonville Dolphins go on the road to play Savannah State. Kickoff is at 3.30 Eastern. And in the nightcap, Moorhead State hosts Southern Virginia at 7 p.m. There is one Sunday game in the Pioneer League schedule. The Dayton Flyers will take on Central State University at 5 p.m. tomorrow in Muscatine, Iowa. And now, on to the Division I Bowl subdivision and the AP Top 25 in progress at the moment. In the first quarter, number one, Georgia and Georgia Southern are scoreless. In the first quarter, number two, Ohio State is over top of Youngstown State, 13-0. Also in the first quarter, it is a no score between Florida and Hawaii. Florida is ranked fifth in the country. At the half, it's LSU 31, and Appalachian State nothing. LSU ranked seventh in the country. At the end of the first quarter, number 13, Wisconsin, leads Akron 14-0. In the second quarter, number 17, Virginia Tech and East Carolina are scoreless. Also in the first quarter, number 22, Penn State, leads over Coastal Carolina 14-0. And also in the first quarter, number 25, Pitt, leads Bowling Green 7-0. There are no fouls at this point. Of course, it's early on in the day. That makes sense. Moving on to the upcoming schedule for today. Several games at 3.30. Number 8, WVU takes on Villanova. And number 3, Southern Cal, is at Virginia. Brigham Young will play Northern Iowa at 6 o'clock. Brigham Young ranked 16th in the country. Then on slate of games at 7 o'clock, I'll read the names of those teams playing. Number 4, Oklahoma. Number 10, Auburn. Number 11, Texas. Number 12, Texas Tech. Number 14, Kansas. And number 19, South Florida. They are all playing at 7 o'clock tonight. Two teams will be playing against each other at 8 o'clock in the top 25. Number 9, Tim Clemson plays number 24, Alabama at the Georgia Dome. And at 8.30, number 6, Missouri takes on number 20, Illinois at the Edward Jones Dome. Then two games at 10 o'clock tonight for the top 20 Five, number 15, Arizona State, takes on Northern Arizona, and number 21, Oregon, takes on Washington. Let's bring it closer to home now with scores in the ACC. We'll mention those games that are happening later today. Of course, I already mentioned USC and Virginia at 3.30. Then at 3.45, Delaware will take on Maryland. At 6 o'clock, it'll be UNC taking on McNeese State at home. At 7 o'clock, Duke takes on James Madison at home, and Boston College will go on the road to Kent State tonight at 7.30. And of course, Alabama and Clemson also mentioned earlier, they play tonight at 8 o'clock. Finally, scores of local interest. Just reiterating from earlier, number 17, Virginia Tech is over top, or is actually tied with East Carolina at no score, and Appalachian State is trailing big time to LSU, 31 to nothing. Elon College, by the way, tucks on the Richmond Spiders at 7 tonight. And that's us for the Sunshine Car Care scoreboard. In just a moment, we'll get back to Bowie Street, North Carolina, for kickoff between the Birmingham Southern Panthers and the Campbell Fighting Camels. This is the Bojangles Tailgate Show on the Campbell University Radio Network. We're driving fewer miles, eating out less, turning vacations into staycations. If this isn't a recession, it sure feels like one. And if you haven't looked for a lower price on car insurance, you're probably thinking about it. Careful. All state agents have seen other companies skimp on coverage to get the price down. Want to save money without cutting corners? Before you call anyone else, call an Allstate agent for a free good hands coverage checkup. It only takes a few minutes to see what protection you need, and it doesn't have to be expensive. People who switched to Allstate last year saved $353 on average. Just because you have insurance doesn't mean you're protected. That's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Get your free good hands coverage checkup. Call Lillington Allstate agent Daryl Wilson at 910-814-0055. Again, 910-814-0055. Are you in good hands? Bring it back. Yeah, go ahead and bring it. Okay. We welcome everyone back to the Bojangles Tailgate Show here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridges live 
as the Fighting Camels get set to take on the Panthers of Birmingham Southern. We'll get to your starting lineups here in just a little bit, but uh, final comments from the stadium, Mickey, as we get prepared for what is going to be a historic event here at Campbell University. Final comments, Robert. It's just uh, so exciting to be here, to see everything happen and progress. I know the coaches are excited. The players are excited. Birmingham Southern is one of those teams you got to be real careful about. They do have a year's experience. They do have uh, an offense that's explosive. Campbell's got to be very, very cautious and not be too emotional and not lose control of, of what the game is all about. Yep, it's certainly going to be interesting. The point toss just moments ago. We'll find out who's going to get the football first when we return here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Bojangles knows tailgaters. Before you even get to the game, there can be a vicious throwdown. Everybody fighting over what to get, how much to get. That's why Bojangles, home of the original and best tailgate special, has expanded their lineup so there's plenty of options. Starting lineup, the original tailgate special. Eight pieces of Cajun fried chicken, two picnic-sized fixins, four made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of iced tea. Or upsize to the Super Tailgate Special. Twelve pieces of chicken, three picnic-sized fixins, six buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of tea. Still not enough? Let's call in the big guy. The new Jumbo Tailgate Special. Twenty pieces of Cajun fried chicken, four picnic-sized fixins, a dozen made-from-scratch biscuits, and a gallon of iced tea. And if you like your chicken off the bone, there's the Supreme Tailgate Special that includes twelve whole-breast tenderloin fillets. The great debate over where the tailgate is over. Everybody can agree on Bojangles. It's more than delicious. It's tradition. The Campbell University Radio Network presents live play-by-play -play action of Fighting Camel Football. Campbell Football is brought to you in part by Carly C's IGA, Campus Habitat, Bojangles, Triangle Orthopedic Associates, McPhail's Pharmacy, Allstate Insurance and Agent Daryl Wilson, Southeastern Interiors, and Sunshine Car Care. Now, back to the field and kickoff with the voice of the Fighting Camels, Robert Harper. Campbell won the toss and has elected to defer the option until the second half. We take a real quick look at the offensive starters for Birmingham Southern. Up front, not all that big and not all that experienced. They do have four sophomores across the offensive line, including Ryan Creel, Lee Hopp, uh, Cameron Horton, and Jonathan Jones. The center, however, is a freshman from Kiln, Mississippi, and Teddy Morris. He's the biggest guy along the offensive front at 6'1", 280 pounds. For Campbell... Their defensive front will line up like this. Charles Priori, Chad McDuffie, Randall Herring, and Jason Hill. That's the strength of the football team. The defensive line, Russell Wentowski, Milton Brown, and John Flory expected to start at the backer positions. And in the secondary, the corners, Brad Bauer, Jared Hart, and the safeties, Christian Dixon and Stephen Goldsmith. Birmingham Southern is set to receive the kickoff. They'll be moving from right to left. Back deep to receive the kick. It'll be David Langston along with Michael Franklin. Both of those young men have been here a year. Kicking things off for Campbell University will be the freshman, Adam Willits. The 6'3", 207-pound freshman has the best leg of all the kickers on the Campbell team. Campbell dressed in that all-orange black helmets with the Campbell CU on the left and right side of the helmets. Birmingham Southern in the all-white black helmets with the gold Birmingham Southern College logo on the headgear. Once again, it is Langston and it is Franklin back deep to receive. They await the kick at the 15-yard line and we're just moments away from the first football game here at Boys Creek, North Carolina, in 58 years. A packed house on hand, and Willits approaches the football, and it's a high end-over-end end kick that Franklin will take right at his 15-yard line. Works straight up the field, has room to run, breaks clear through the 30 to 35 before he's finally wrapped up by the kicker, Willits, at the 38. So a good return 
by Willits of about 23 yards, or excuse me, by Franklin of about 23 yards before Willits, the kicker, is able to bring him down. And here comes the Birmingham Southern offense. And, Mickey, as you mentioned, they will try to spread you out as much as possible. You're right, Robert. They really do, and uh, Joe Thickpan is, uh, you know, going to be real tough to stop. This is a real key right here, first drive. Five wide receivers. Thickpan, the only one awaiting the snap. They'll put Arrington in motion, and immediately Thickpan is wrapped up as he faked the handoff, and he'll be dropped for a loss back to the 35-yard line. Call it a loss of three. It'll just stop the entire defensive front, but a good job and a great push by the Campbell defensive line. It looked like Randall Herring was the first one to make the stop. I thought the defensive line did a great job first series. Three down linemen, three linebackers in this hit. Campbell will use nickel a lot. In the shotgun to the right of Thinkpin is Arrington. Now they're going to send Franklin in motion. This time they're going to hand it off to Arrington, who is immediately hit again for a loss of two yards. And I believe it may have been Randall Herring one more time, the big guy in on the stop twice now. Two tackles for loss on the two opening plays of the game. Randall did come through there. There was a stun inside by the linebacker, 21, Mike uh, John Flurry. So that'll bring up third down and long. Call it third and officially 15 at the Birmingham Southern 34-yard line. Thick pin into the gun. Arrington to his right, a receiver each way as well. They'll send Franklin in motion. Now they're going to pitch it off the Franklin right side. Goldsmith chasing Franklin, who's going to fall forward from the 34 to the 35-yard line. He gets about a yard and a half on the carry. But the first series for Birmingham Southern, a three and out, and it'll force a punt. And going back deep to receive the punt for Campbell will be Brad Bauer. Could not have started better defensively for the Camels. A real key player, I think, in this game. Coach Steele talked about the kicking game. Uh, Drew Jackson from Birmingham Southern is, is a real special punter. So Jackson, who will take the snap. At about his own 22, the snap is through, the kick is on the way, and it is a high line drive kick that drives Bauer back to his 25 where he makes the fair catch, and that is for Campbell. We'll set up on offense. So a great defensive series to start, Mickey. Three plays. The first two went for negative games thanks to Randall Herring. They're able to stop the stretch play, and now they get the football back with a chance to try to get something offensively going. You're right. The defense did a great job. They stayed in their lanes. They played uh, the option extremely well control the line of scrimmage, and now it's time for the offense to take control. So now it'll be Matt Villano under center. They'll send two receivers right, and Carl Smith, who expects to carry most of the load, in the backfield. Campbell first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Villano barks out the signals, and he'll hand off right side. That's Carl Smith, cuts it up, picks up maybe a yard, yard and a half as he gets to the 27, so call it a gain of officially one. It'll bring up second down on a long nine. And talking with the coaches, they thought it was really important to be able to control the line of scrimmage. They knew early because of the size advantage that they would not probably make any big breakaways, but as the game progressed, they felt like they were going to be able to take those two- and three-yard gains and make bigger gains. Two receivers left, one to the right. The back of the backfield, again, is Carl Smith. Milano will work from under center. Drops back, looks left, wants to throw. Pass is going to be dropped by Griffiths on the far side. It was broken up by Zach Napier. Napier, a returnee from a year ago, one of just a very few actually playing defensively in this ballgame for Birmingham Southern. Only one starter from a year ago in the front seven. That could be a big test today if your head coach for Birmingham Southern and Eddie Garfinkel. So Campbell will face a third and long of their own. Call it officially third and nine. Third and eight on the scoreboard. Three receivers left. One to the right. This time Volano in the gun with Carl Smith. Volano takes the snap. Quick throw out to the left and Severance is going to be knocked to the ground because the pass was behind the line of scrimmage. There will be no pass interference. It falls incomplete and Campbell will go three and out offensively and now their first punt of the football game upcoming. Not unusual for the defenses to be in control, especially in the first game and early in the first game. I think the Camels will be okay. They just need to come off the line and relax. So Langston will go back to receive the punt. Brennan Burt, punt formation for the of the Camels punter, Brennan Burt. Burt, a freshman as well. Most of the Camels are in the first punt. He gets away as a low line drive kick that will bounce 
on the Campbell side of the 50 and roll all the way down to the Birmingham Southern 41-yard line. And that is where Birmingham Southern will get it first and 10 with their second drive. And so they have initially, Birmingham Southern that is, won the battle of field position. So far, uh, you're correct. The, the kickoff return uh, had, had a lot to do with that. Defensively, it's important to be able to hold uh, Birmingham Southern to negative yardage or either just a stalemate to be able to control the line of scrimmage and get back on the other side of the field. So Campbell, who was dominant on the defensive side of the football in the first series, will get a second crack at the quarterback for Birmingham Southern, Joe Thinkpen. In the gun with two running backs to the right, they'll send Franklin in motion. And they're going to keep the football with Thinkpen. Cuts it up and has good yardage across the 50 and will fall forward for a first down, down to the Campbell 46-yard line. So you could call that a gain of about uh, 13 yards as Thinkpen picks up the first first down of the ball game. And Birmingham Southern will continue to go with that hurry-up offense. Christian Dixon made the stop for the Camels. As there's two receivers, one each way, wing backs on either side of the formation, and Arrington in the gun along with Thigpen. They're going to pitch the bat, the football out to Franklin, who's going to cut it up, pick up good yardage here on the near side as he's run out of bounds at about the 41. Once again, Dixon in on the stop along with Hart, both members of the Campbell secondary. So it'll bring up second down. And call it about six, as Birmingham Southern has now raced inside the Campbell side of the football field, and now an odd formation. Into the flat, pass is going to be cut, and finally dropped on the play was Austin Tunnel, the freshman from Houston, Texas, who'll be right at the first yard, first down sticks at the 35. We'll see if they're going to be able to pick up a first down, and they're going to measure as they bring the change from the far side of the field. Nope, now they're going to say first down, Birmingham Southern. The official immediately stopping the clock that gives Birmingham Southern a first down, and with 10.48 to go in the first half, we're still scoreless, but on Birmingham Southern's second possession of the ball game, they're moving it against the Campbell defense. Same formation, Arrington once again right beside Thinkpin in the gun. Thinkpin will send a receiver in motion. That's Rodriguez. They're going to pitch it out. Rodriguez cuts it up, and he's going to be run out of bounds on the far side by the Campbell defense. And on the stop was John Flurry, the freshman outside linebacker, and so there's no gain on the play. Much better defensive coverage on the option, especially on the pitch man. We got in trouble on the other one at this end when, when two or two d defenders were playing the quarterback and the cover two corner could not come up and play the pitch. So think Penn again of the shotgun. You'll see this all day long. Second down at Ted at the Campbell 35-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right. They'll send Franklin in motion here to the near side of the field. Thigpen now calls for the football. He's going to throw it out left side. Pass is going to be complete. And Picking up three and four yards as he's dropped at the 41-yard line is Tay Walker, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama. And that'll bring up third down and about six yards for Birmingham Southern at the Campbell 31-yard line. So with 9.48 on a rolling first quarter clock, Big Ben will go into the shotgun. Two receivers left, one to the right. Arrington will move from the right to the left side of Thigpen in that gun. And now timeout has been called by Birmingham Southern. 9.35 to go here in this opening quarter. We're still scoreless. Birmingham Southern facing a third and six. We'll be back after this timeout on the Campbell University Radio Network. Located in the heart of eastern North Carolina, the trophy case is the preferred custom trophy and award shop of the Fighting Camels. Each trophy is assembled with care and attention to detail is paid to each award, ensuring it conveys your pride of achievement. The trophy case also offers interior signage, custom engraving and artwork, and in-house embroidery. Stop by 125 North Wilson Street in Dunn or give us a call at 1-888-679-0958. 1-888-679-0958. The trophy case in Dunn is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. McDonald's presents Confessions of a Fake Folk Fan. Don't judge me. I just really liked mochas. But soon I started wearing clogs and playing mandolin and dating lazy beatniks. But McDonald's McCafe mochas took me away from all that. Now I'm wearing synthetics and listening to hip-hop again. Thank you, McDonald's. 
the cafe mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos from McDonald's. With fresh ground espresso and real steamed milk, it's all the coffee, all the attitude at participating McDonald's. Campus Habitat is a premier oh, no, student-only no. apartment Cut that. complex located directly... Welcome back to Campbell University's football stadium. Third and six at Franklin will catch the pitch out of the far side, but a flag will fly as he's brought down at about the 20, excuse me, the 19-yard line. So it'll be a first down. It looks like it may be a hold, though, against Birmingham Southern. We're going to have to wait and see and if it is. And it will be a hold against the Panthers. It will bring up yet another third down for Birmingham Southern as they'll mark it off from the spot of the foul. So Mickey, a... A tough situation there for the Camels, but uh, they get a little bit of help from the Panthers. We were very fortunate in that situation, Robert. Uh, we've got to be able to cover the option. It seems like Birmingham Southern has attacked us on the on the perimeter with the option. Uh, I guess we're trying to, you know, taking care of everything inside, and they've seen a weakness out there on the perimeter. So they'll back up the Panthers near the original line of scrimmage at the 31-yard line. So with 9.27 to go here in the opening half, clock stop. The holding call will make it third down at about six again. A couple of substitutions for the Panthers as they look to the sideline to get the play. Campbell defensively had a great first series. They have given up a first down on this drive, trying to avoid giving up a second first down to the Panthers. And big pin into the gun. Two receivers left, one the right. It is Arrington in the shotgun with thick pit. Now they're going to send Rodriguez in motion. And they're going to hand it off to the running back, Arrington, who fights and claws his way across the 25. And just inside the 25 should be enough for a Birmingham Southern first down. So 8.52 to go here in the opening half. Still scoreless, but Birmingham Southern with their second possession on the march. Randall Herring had a great first drive for Campbell, defensively, that is, as they came up with two consecutive tackles for loss. But Birmingham Southern finding a weakness in that Campbell defense early on. They've been able to pick up a couple of first downs on this drive. Big pin once again of the shotgun. Ball spotted on the far hash. Arrington once again the lone running back to Thick Pin's left. They put Rodriguez in motion to the near side. Thick Pin's going to cut it up and break a tackle of Herring and push forward down the 20-yard line before he is hit on the play by Campbell. And so call it a gain of close to five yards. It'll bring up second down in five with 8:14 to go first half or first quarter. Once again, big pin into the shotgun. A receiver each way, and Arrington again the back. Campbell showing a 4-3 look against what has been a very run-oriented attack so far. And once again, big pin pitching the ball to Franklin. He's going to cut it up, pick up to the 15, and down inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. They call it the 7, and that'll be yet another Birmingham Southern first down and make it first down and goal at the 7-yard line for the Panthers. Robert, we've got to have a little more help. Uh, defensively from the secondary, especially from the strong safety, free safety coming up, and linebacker in pursuit on that option pitch. So big pit in the gun. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Birmingham Southern looking to draw first blood. They put Franklin in motion, and they're going to hand him the football over around the end. He's going to try to stretch it out, and Chandler makes the hit ball loose. It's going to go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback, and it'll be Campbell football first and ten at their own 20-yard line. So far, Campbell is winning the, the battle up front on opportunity, so it's important that the offense will take control now and move the ball, sustain a drive. And that is the first turnover force for the Fighting Camels defensively in over 58 years, and it couldn't have come at a better time. It gives the football back to the offense. Absolutely. Got Matt Villano has to take the offense now and, and, and uh, see if we can make something happen. So Villano will be out for his second offensive drive as Franklin fumbled it through the back of the end zone. Or off the sideline, I should say. Regardless, it is a touchback, and it'll be Campbell football. Severance, the wide receiver to the left. Murphy here to the near side of the field as Campbell is moving left to right. Carl Smith, the tailback, Milano under center with the tight end to the left of the formation. They're going to hand the football to Smith, cuts it out right side, has room across the 25 and down to about the 27-yard line. He's wrapped up on the play 
by Birmingham Southern's Trey Strain, the sophomore from Woodland, Alabama, making the stop. Last year, one of the leading tacklers on this club with 33 tackles from that secondary spot. So bring up second down at three for the Fighting Cavaliers. As they have the football right at their own 27-yard line. It's almost on the 28. So call it officially second at two. Milano in the gun. He's going to drop back, look left, step up, throw the football, pass complete to Murphy. Spins out a tackle at the 35. Crosses the 40 and goes down to the 42-yard line. Once again, it will stop was Trey Strain, but Kelvin Murphy, who is probably the most polished wide receiver of this group, makes a big play. Great play, great call. We got in a, a situation where it was second and short, and that always makes a great time to throw the football. So Volano, his first completion offensively, gain of 14 yards, and now an eye formation look for the first time in the ball game. Kramer, the fullback. Once again, it is Carl. Uh, Smith, the tailback, he will follow the lead block of Kramer to the 45 before he's wrapped up there. Call it a gain of three. 6-17 Six, six seventeen left first half or first quarter, and we're tied at zero. I think Coach Steele probably has a script of offensive plays. He's just trying to get some tendencies on their defensive fronts, and I think you'll see him open it up you know, a little more in the second quarter. So here we go, second down at about seven for the Fighting Camels here after picking up their first first down of the ball game. Two receivers right, two to the left. The running back is Smith to the left of Volano in the gun. And they're going to hand it off to Smith, who's going to fall across the offensive line, pick up two and three yards before he's wrapped up on the play. Hit on the stop for Birmingham Southern was Brian Jackson, a freshman, standing at 6'4", 240 pounds. He's the right defensive end. And it'll bring up third down and about four for Matt Volano this offense. Birmingham Southern, not the biggest opponent Campbell will see all year. So maybe an opportunity as this game wears on, Mickey, to continue to get a big push up front. So three receivers right, one to the left, and it's third and four for the Camels at their own 48. Milano's going to roll right, looking to throw the football. He will pass. is going to com be completed right at the sticks to Ray Griffiths, who hangs on to it. And they look like they're going to be about a half a yard shy of a first down. So call it a gain of three. We'll see if Dale Steele decides to roll the dice here. I think we're going to go for it. Uh, Campbell uh, just brought in two tight ends. So I could probably see maybe some kind of come off the ball, something real quick in the form of a dive play. So now they're going to bring the sticks from all from across the way. But five and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. Three to nothing, the Camels lead as we head to the second quarter. Birmingham Southern football, first to 10 at their own 34-yard line. Their last drive ended with a fumble that was called a touchback, and then Campbell went down and scored the first points of the game. So it'll be thick pin in the gun as we switch into the field, and now I believe a flag flies late. Illegal substitution maybe is the only thing I could think of at this point. There are still 21 seconds on the play clock. And now we'll just have to wait and see. I believe it's going to be the official calling time here. They're going to say it's a dead ball, illegal substitution against Campbell. So five yards against the Campbells, the first penalty of the ball game for Campbell University. We did have a pass interference earlier on in this ball game by Birmingham Southern. But it'll bring up first and five now at the 38-yard line. As Dick Penn is once again in the gutter, receiver each way, two wingbacks and a tailback. I believe this is Langston now in the ball game at tailback. As they'll send Rodriguez in motion, they're going to hand it off to Langston, who breaks through the line and will keep carrying tacklers across the 50, the 45, and all the way down to the 43-yard line of the Fighting Camels. So that's a nice little gain by Langston, the tailback, before he is brought down by the Campbell defensive lineman, E.J. Rasco, the transfer from Marshall. So Rasco in there for the first time, and he is able to make a stop that may have saved the touchdown. The carry by Langston was good for 18 yards. 
So it's now first to 10 at the Campbell 43 for Birmingham Southern. As Digpin's going to throw it out to Rodriguez, who makes the catch, cuts it straight up the sideline. And across the 40 to 35 and down to about the 31-yard line, another first down. Call it a gain of about 12. And so Birmingham Southern with back-to-back big plays, taking up chunks of yardage. They're right back in Campbell territory, even though they're down 3 to nothing. They're on the march again. Three wide receivers in the formation. As they send Ryan Carlson in motion, now though Franklin will get on the move, and they're going to hand it off to Langston, who will fall forward for maybe two yards as he crosses the 30 to the 29-yard line. Eric Feliciano, the 5'9 freshman from Fayetteville, is done with Bird High School in on the stop. I think that play was a setup play. I think they're getting ready to run the option uh, against Campbell. They had success on the second drive. They've run two dives from tackle to tackle. I think you're going to see the option play now. So now, second down and nine. Three wide receivers to the left. Big Pitt in the gun, and he's going to hand it off to Langston on the stretch. Play Langston cuts it up 20 and down to the 16-yard line before he is upended by the Campbell secondary. And another big gain by Langston as Birmingham Southern has really figured out this Campbell defense. Very Campbell's making too many tackles in the secondary, and that's usually not good. So three receivers right. Langston in the gun again. He's had a ton of work already on this drive. As there's 13.34 to go here in the first half. Franklin is in motion. And they're going to hand the bat, the football right up the middle. I believe that's Langston again. And he is dropped immediately by E.J. Rasko, who was able to shed his tackle up front, or his block, excuse me, and then drop Langston for only a gain of one. Birmingham Southern's got a nice drive going. They know their defense stayed on the field a long time. They're trying to keep the offense on the field, trying to wear down Campbell's defense. So second down and nine at the Campbell 15-yard line, Birmingham Southern huddling up around Thinkman is in the gun. Now they'll get set with two right receivers right, left, excuse me, and one right. Thinkman takes the hand off to Langston. Now he's going to try to cut it up, and he'll be wrapped up on the play. E.J. Rasko with the initial pressure. And then making the stop was Chad McDuffie, the freshman from Fuquay Marina, just off the road. Camel's secondary and linebackers did a great job covering their men as they were coming out. Joe Thigpen had no one to throw it to, and as a result, he was sacked. So 12.30 to go first half. Campbell has forced a third and long at the 20-yard line for Birmingham Southern. And once again, the Panthers slow getting the play in with 15 seconds to go on the play clock. Now they're set. Two receivers right, one to the left. Langston, the running back to the left of Thigpen at the gun. And Thigpen going to fake the handoff. Now he's under pressure again, and he's going to be wrapped up for a sack. I believe it is going to be Jason Hill in on the stop, along with Chris Price, the linebacker. And so Campbell, with some pressure there late in that drive, will force a long field goal attempt out of Birmingham Southern. That was going to be a play-action pass by Birmingham Southern. They were faking the dive to Langston, and then they were going to try to hit Tay Walker across the middle. Right around a 42-yard attempt here for the place kicker, Jared Spooner, who has the leg to get this through. He was kicking them from 50 during warm-up. The holder is a backup quarterback, so Camel has to be careful. Yeah, in fact, Drew Jackson a year ago was 10 for 14 throwing the football in a lot of situations similar to this, so always have to be worried about the fake and now an illegal substitution will make it fourth down and a little bit closer as it'll make this kick come from right around 37 yards now. Coach Steele talked in his pregame talk about mistakes and Campbell making sure they didn't make the mistakes that would hurt their football team. They've had two illegal substitutions on this drive. So it'll be fourth down and still a long ways to go 14 yards but now the kick will come from 37 yards away as opposed to 42. Ball spotted far hash the kick is headed towards the facility end of this stadium, and Spooner's kick is on the way. It is up, and I don't believe it's any good. It's wide right, no good, and the Campbell defense once again able to hold, and so Birmingham Southern to right now a little over a quarter. They're still scoreless on the board. They are, and uh, the Campbell defense has been able to hold their own. Campbell's been very fortunate uh, with the touchback and the field goal attempt, and now if the offense can control the line of scrimmage and punch in some uh, touchdown or either another field goal, it would do an awful lot going into 
the halftime of this first football game. And we're going to see Wesley Snow for the first time. Bellano led Campbell on a scoring drive. Snow in the ball game. He was the first string quarterback all throughout camp, and Bellano obviously named the starter, but Dale Steele wanted to get Wesley Snow in the ball game, so they're going to hand it off to Kramer on the fullback dive, and he is able to get to just the 20-yard line, so no gain as Kramer's first carry doesn't net any yardage for the Camels. Snow, a guy that's not going to impress you physically, but he is more of a cerebral-type quarterback, Mickey, and that's the reason why they wanted to get him in here. They didn't really have a true number one. They kind of went uh, in a platoon system all fall long, and now obviously Wesley Snow getting his chance in a game. Snow in the shotgun with Smith to his right. Going to drop back, look right, wants to throw the football pass, caught by Paul Constantine. He's going to drag a tackler for a couple of yards as he gets up near the 27, maybe even the 28-yard line before he's wrapped up on the far sideline by Birmingham Southern's Victor Allen. Allen, the only returning starter from a year ago in that front seven for the Panthers. Great job, uh, Wesley Snow and Paul Constantine. A great timing route, a uh, great throw. A nice job by the offensive line. Certainly was, and so it'll bring up third down and about three here. Ball spotted at the 27-yard line of Campbell. They lean three to nothing with ten minutes even to go here in this first half. Constantine right. Severance will go wide to the left. The slot is Griffiths here to the near side. Snow barking out the signals, calls for the snap, high snap. Going to step up, throw the football. Severance had to go right through his mitts and incomplete. So... A throw a little bit behind Severance, but one he still should have caught, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Would have been a great catch if he had caught it. It was behind him. Uh, there was a little more pressure on the defensive line. Uh, Wesley Snow had to throw it quick and probably had to rush his throw, and that's why it wasn't quite in the right place it needed to be. So now David Langston back to return the punt of Brian or Brennan Burt, excuse me. Burt, a freshman from Pittsburgh, New York. He was recruited strictly to pump the football for the Camels, and he has already done it once in this ballgame. Snap is through. The kick is on the way. A low end-over-end kick that will bounce at the 40 and die right there as the Camels will stop and pick it up at the 42. So not a very long punt, but one that nets no return. It will be first to 10 for Birmingham Southern at their own 42-yard line. That was the second time that Camel has punted. The first time it was almost blocked, and I think the punter, Brandon Burke, probably was worried about the rush and did not get a good drop and therefore did not get a high punt or a long punt. So Birmingham Southern back for yet another drive. Joe Thickpen, while he has been effective at times, has been held relatively in check, and Campbell would like to keep that that way for the remainder of this ball game as they lead 3 to nothing. And now I believe we have a penalty against Birmingham Southern. I could not make it out from the official, but nonetheless, it is a loss of five, so they're going to spot it at the 37-yard line. Interesting. So two receivers, one each way. That's Franklin and Tay Walker for Birmingham Southern. They'll send a man in motion. As Thigpen will go into the gun, Langston stands to his left. They're going to hand the football to Langston. He's going to cut it up on the outside. He's got room to run across the 40-45, works towards the sideline, and will go down at about the 48-and-a-half, call it the 49, and that'll be a good enough for a first down, a gain of 11. Langston has done an outstanding job for Birmingham Southern. Uh, been in the last two drives, has given Birmingham Southern an opportunity to run the football, and I'm sure it's going to create some seams for Joe Thickpin to throw it. Langston now six carries at 50 yards in just the last two drives for Birmingham Southern. As Thickpin will shift the formation to the left. Awaits the snap in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Langston again, and he'll be wrapped up for a loss. Boy, the defensive front, when they get pushed, they get pushed. It's Randall Herring in on this stop. Boy, he has been all over the place here in this first half. They really like the defensive line, and the defensive line certainly hasn't been the problem. They're just finding those little holes, those little gashes here that have been opened up for some big games. I think the defensive line has got to come off the ball and, and find, the, uh, find the football. Uh, sometimes you can sit on your heels and wait for it to happen, but the defensive line has to make things happen. E.J. Rasko into the ball game. Charles Fiore will get a rest. As Rasko will be at the right defensive end, three receivers left, well, two to the right, and Thigpen in the gut. They've really spread the camels out here. Thigpen wants to throw the football. Pass is going to be broken up nicely by Bowers on the slant. So a nice play by Brad Bauer, really tested for the first time, was able to make a nice defensive play. 
Joe Thickpen for Birmingham Southern is staring down the receivers as he's throwing the ball. Fortunately, the linebackers can see that, and maybe one of, one of our linebackers for Campbell can step in front and pick it off. So now it'll be third down and long. Call it officially 10 yards at their own 48-yard line. Big pin in the gun. Arrington is back into the ball game for Langston. A receiver each way, two wing backs. They'll send Franklin in motion. Big pin going to piss the ball out to Franklin, who's going to cut it up and be wrapped up after a gain of about eight. So it'll bring up fourth down and a long two here. As the Camel is able to avoid giving up a big third down conversion. But now, if you're the head coach, Eddie Garfinkel, for the Panthers, you have a decision to make. And I believe it looks like they're going to punt it away. But you have to be careful. Because Drew Jackson, as we mentioned, is one of the backup quarterbacks on this team. And while he has a great leg, he can certainly throw it. He was 10 for 14, as we mentioned earlier on, last season. I think Birmingham Southern, with the leg of Drew Jackson, is going to punt the ball and try to work field position here. So Jackson will punt it away. Ball spotted at the Campbell 44-yard line. The snap is through. The punt is on the way. He's shanked it off the side of his foot, and it'll bounce at about the 23 and roll back to the 24, maybe even the 25-yard line. So not a great punt, only 19 yards, in fact, on that punt by Drew Jackson. And Campbell will get pretty solid field position from where they were expecting to get it before that punt happened. I think you're exactly right. I think Drew Jackson from Birmingham Southern was trying to pin the ball inside the 10-yard line. He was very good at that last year in their first year. Uh, had uh, 12 kicks inside the 20-yard line. And I think he had a bad drop, and uh, the ball came off the side of his foot. A great, uh, you know, great job for Camel as far as being able to come up off, out of that situation. So Snow will remain in the ball game at quarterback. Smith is the tailback. He dots the eye. Two receivers right. Snow's going to take the football, hand it off to Smith. Tried to cut it up, but lost his footing. It will fall forward for about a half a yard. So call it a gain of one, bringing up second down and nine. Seven twenty-two to go. Here with this opening half, Campbell leading Birmingham Southern three to nothing. Campbell has the opportunity to create seams. Carl Smith's got to hit the hole sooner. So an eye formation set. Royal, the receiver here to the near side. Kelvin Murphy wide to the right. And Snow's going to hand it back to Smith. This time he hits the hole hard, spins out of the tackle, and he'll fall forward across the 30 and down to about the 33-yard line. That's a gain of seven. Bring up third down on about a yard and a half for the Camels with 6.45 to go opening half. What that play was was a little counter misdirection play. Had a pulling guard. Uh, it creates angles, and it did create a seam. So Royal goes to the right. Constantine, the receiver here to the near side of the field. Carl Smith, the tailback. Wesley Snow under center with two tight ends. Snow barks out to signal. French faces a seven-man front. He's going to hand it right side for Carl Smith, trying to cut it back, but nowhere to go as he's wrapped up by the entire defensive line. He may have gained a yard, and that more than likely will force Campbell to punt. Leading the charge defensively for Birmingham Southern was Brian Jackson, a freshman from Houston, Texas. He prepped at Army Prep. And so fourth down and one will force the punter, Brennan Burt, back onto the football field for his third punt of the afternoon. Very important that we get Campbell gets a great punt here, uh, especially with uh, Joe Thigpen and the offensive uh, group with Birmingham Southern. Here they come after the punt. Punt is going to be blocked and recovered by Birmingham Southern at about the 22-yard line. So Birmingham Southern coming after the punter, Burt. They're able to get to it, and it will be first and 10 at the 23-yard line. Birmingham Southern with a nice place on special teams. Camel's a little slow getting rid of the ball. Uh, that happens in the first game. Sometimes uh, game speed is not created until after you've played a game or two. But we, Camel just needs to speed things up on the snap and also on the kick. So to bring up first and ten for Birmingham Southern at the Campbell 23-yard line, 5.39 to go opening half. The Campbell defense has bent, but they have not broken as of yet. They're going to have to do it again. They're spending an awful lot of time on the field on a very hot day. So here's Thick Pit at the gun. He has been in the shotgun primarily, in fact, in every snap so far offensively for the Panthers. They'll send Franklin in motion, and they're going to hand him the football. Rasco right there to make first contact, and then he's wrapped up at the 25-yard line by the rest of the pursuit for Campbell University. 
And I believe it was Milton Brown, the freshman middle linebacker, who came in to clean up defensively for Campbell. The sweep play was a little slow developing, and there's penetration in the middle of the line, and that created uh, a great defensive play for Campbell. So here it is, big pin again of the gun, second down at 12 at the 25-yard line. 5.05 to go, first half, Campbell 3, Birmingham Southern nothing, but the Panthers are threatening here. Big Ben going to keep it around left in, now pitch it out to Franklin. He's not going to gain much. Nice defensive play on the far side by Campbell defender Eric Feliciano, the defensive back able to make a play on Big Ben and the running back all at the same time. That's a nice play. You don't see that very often. Great defensive play, great defensive individual play. Campbell has to do a much better job on the option because Joe Thigpen is running downhill. And as you look out there defensively for Campbell, a lot of substitutes there in that defensive secondary. As it's a gain of two, third down at ten. Thigpen of the shotgun. The ball spotted at the Campbell 23-yard line. Now they're going to look to the sideline to change the play, but only five seconds on the play clock. Thigpen has to hurry. Three, and he takes the snap with two. He's going to drop back. Look right as he rolls right, throws towards the sideline, pass incomplete. As they were trying to find the senior, Tay Walker from Birmingham, Alabama. It'll bring up fourth down at 10. We'll see if Birmingham Southern decides to kick it again, and they will. Tay Walker is the, the most experienced receiver that Birmingham Southern has, so in crucial situations, I'm sure they'll probably go to him. So it should be about a 40-yard kick here for Jared Spooner. Going to be closer to 39 as they'll spot it just inside the 30-yard line. So 4-10 to go, opening half. Campbell trying to hold Birmingham Southern off the board again. Almost the exact same spot that Spooner missed earlier in this, in this quarter. As the snap is a little low, the kick is on the way. This one is going to be no good. He hooked it left. So he missed the first one right. He missed the second one left. And Campbell again has helped Birmingham Southern scoreless. It's still 3 to nothing. One of the keys in every football game is turnovers, and kicking game. I'm not sure which team is winning the kicking game because Birmingham Southern has missed two field goals. Campbell has had one punt block, so all those things are going to be uh, shored up, I'm sure, at halftime. So with 4.05 to go here in the opening half, Campbell will get the football back. This would at their own 20 three-yard line, and Volano back in at quarterback. Two receivers right, one to the left, and Smith, the running back in the gun. Volano drops back, looks left. Pass is going to be complete on the far side. It looks like it's going to be good enough for a first down. 11 yards, the official tally, and it's Kelvin Murphy again, who has three catches now for Campbell University, and 33 yards. He's definitely been a go-to target. He has. It was a great call on first down. Looks like they're going to bring it back. And it looks like there might be a hold to, on the offensive front for Campbell, which would be big considering that was a very nice play for Campbell. And it is a hold. And that will be marked off from the original line of scrimmage and should make it second down and 20 at about the 13-yard line. So Campbell now, excuse me, first down and 20 at the 13-yard 13 13 yard line. So 3.58 to go here in this first half. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridger is here topside at Campbell University Football Stadium. Glad you could join us. Campbell, three, Birmingham, Southern, nothing. Two receivers right, one to the left. Smith, the running back in the gun, along with Volano, and they're going to hand the football off to Smith, who tries to break a couple of tackles and will up to about the 14-yard line, so he gained about a yard. Earl Smith on the carry. Not a bad call, first and long. A lot of defensive teams expect you to throw the ball in that situation. A draw was a good call. So Campbell, second down at 19 they face now. In their own end at the 14-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right. We've yet to see any running back other than Carl Smith in the game for Campbell. Volano has split time with Wesley Snow so far here in this first half. So Volano takes the snap, looks right, wants to throw across the middle. Pass is going to be dropped by Royal at about the 28-yard line. He was sliding down to try to get to the football, but he couldn't hang on. It hit him right in the mix, but fell to the turf. And so with 2.58 left, Campbell faces a third and 19. Another good call by the offensive staff. A slant across the middle. It was a great timing route. Uh, he, uh, the receiver was there. The ball was just a little low. 
So Pilato now, who at one point was three for five in this ball game, now three for seven for 26 yards. He's had a couple of passes dropped. And so with 2.58 left, it's three to nothing. The Camels with the lead here in this first half. Three receivers right, one to the left. Kramer in the gun with Volato, who's going to roll right. Wants to throw the football. He will on the run. Pass is going to be complete at the 30-yard line, but that's all for Campbell University as they're going to spot it about the 31. In on the reception is Carl Blaine, the freshman from Conway, South Carolina, at Conway High School, and it'll bring up fourth down. But nevertheless, Volato and Blaine giving Campbell a little bit more room to work with when it comes to punting the football here. It did. It was a nice call. Uh, possession route, about a 12-yard curl. It gives the punter a little room to punt the football. And we'll see if Birmingham Southern is going to come after the punter again here. It's Blaine awaiting to snap it about his own 16-yard line. And this time they'll punt it through, and Blaine's going to hit one in over end. Excuse me, Bird is, and it's going to roll all the way across the 20, inside the 15, and down to the 11-yard line. Call it officially the 10. Wow. It wasn't pretty, but it er ends up being beautiful as they spot it officially at the 11 with 2.06 to go here in this first half. Well, the, the punt team did a much better job of blocking. Obviously, Birmingham Southern had a return on. Uh, the, the ball did roll end over end. It was at a position in the field where the returner could not pick up the ball, and they just kept rolling, and we were able to have a great uh, difference in the punting game there. Well, the kicking game changing field position now for both teams, and with 2.06 left to go first half, Campbell 3, Birmingham Southern nothing. And Birmingham Southern live at first and 10, but at their own 11-yard line. They'll go three wide receivers. To the right, one to the left, and Arrington, the running back. And Thigpen going to keep right side, and he's going to go nowhere. In fact, he's dropped by Randall Herring again. Boy, he has been everywhere defensively. Made the first two plays on the opening drive, and he's been in the backfield ever since. Great, great job. Could not have played defensive line any better. Uh, he shedded his blocker, found a football, and tackled Joe Thigpen in the backfield. So one minute and 40 seconds left. And it is second down at about 13. Thigpen going to keep the football straight up the middle of the field. He'll have positive yardage across the 10 and up to the 15, where he is dropped after a gain of about eight. And it'll bring up third down and about six yards for Birmingham Southern. I think Birmingham Southern uh, is, is feeling that Joe Thigpen is not involved in the game as much as he needs to be because last year he was very instrumental to the success of their offensive football team. Well, they are missing one of their offensive targets, and Tony Myers, who's expected to start. So three receivers right, big pin of the gun again. He's going to roll towards the near side, cuts it up, looks to run. Now we'll dump it over the middle, but not enough, I do believe. Nope, they're going to give him the spot at the 21-yard line is Tay Walker. It'll the stop for Campbell was Chris Price, but I think it's going to be enough for a first down, and it is. So a first down for Birmingham Southern here. That was a real key down. Uh, Campbell could have gotten great field position and time to put some points on the board. 46 seconds left now to go first half. Campbell three, Birmingham Southern nothing. Now you just need to avoid the big play as the clock continues to roll. Birmingham Southern not slowing down offensively, however. As Thigpen will go into the gun, they'll send a man in motion, and now they're running the clock down near 12 seconds on the play clock. They're going to hand it off to Arrington, and Arrington's going to cut it up across the 20, go down to the 24, so a gain of three. And it'll bring up second down at seven, but that may be the last play of this first half, and we'll have to wait and see if that's exactly what Birmingham Southern's going to do, and it is. Eddie Garfinkel's already taken off his headset. So Birmingham Southern will run out the clock here in this first half. But Campbell has the early lead as we head to halftime. It's 3-0. The Fighting Camels over the Panthers of Birmingham Southern will get to your Campbell University halftime show after this two-minute break on the Campbell University Radio Network. Triangle Orthopedics, team physicians for the Fighting Camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. 
Campus Habitat is a premier student-only apartment complex located directly across from Campbell University. At Campus Habitat, you will find an apartment designed with your college experience in mind. Our apartments are available fully furnished and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. Bojangles knows tailgaters. Before you even get to the game, there can be a vicious throwdown. Everybody fighting over what to get, how much to get. That's why Bojangles, home of the original and best tailgate special, has expanded their lineup so there's plenty of options. Starting lineup, the original tailgate special. Eight pieces of Cajun fried chicken, two picnic-sized fixins, four made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of iced tea. Or upsize to the Super Tailgate Special. 12 pieces of chicken, 3 picnic-sized fixins, 6 buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of tea. Still not enough? Let's call in the big guy. The new Jumbo Tailgate Special. 20 pieces of Cajun fried chicken, 4 picnic-sized fixins, a dozen made-from-scratch biscuits, and a gallon of iced tea. And if you like your chicken off the bone, there's the Supreme Tailgate Special that includes 12 whole-breast tenderloin fillets. The great debate over where the tailgate is over. Everybody can agree on Bojangles. It's more than delicious. It's tradition. We welcome you back to Campbell University Football Stadium. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridges. We're at halftime, and we welcome you into the Campbell University Halftime Show. 3 to nothing. your score. Campbell with the early lead. We would do a scoring summary, but it's pretty simple. Campbell scored on a 30-yard field goal from Adam Willits with just uh, under uh, a play gone by in the second quarter, in fact, right before the uh, second quarter began, 14 plays, 67 yards, 7 minutes and 17 seconds off the clock on that drive. And, well, Mickey, that, that stands to be the difference. I, I think the Campbell defense, while they have bent, they haven't broken yet, and they've got some nice plays in the special teams and some missed field goals to help them out. The defense has played a perfect game in the first half. Uh, they did not break. They, yeah, as you said, they've been a few times. I think there were some problems early with the option on the pitch and quarterback uh, who was responsible for that. I think that was taken care of, and the defense has done a great job. Certainly has. And so Campbell after break, they lead 3-0 here in the first game at 58 years at Billy's Creek, North Carolina. It's time now for your McBell's Pharmacy halftime remedy. Visit McBell's Pharmacy located at the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington or 105 East H Street in Irwin. Vitamin D deficiency causes painful softening and bending of the bone and can increase muscle weakness. Treatment of vitamin D deficiency can produce an increase in muscle strength and a marked decrease in back and lower limb pain. For more information on treatment for this or any ailment, please consult your local McFell's Pharmacist today. McFell's Pharmacy is a proud supporter of the Campbell University Radio Network. We're going to step aside and take a break here on the Campbell University Halftime Show. When we return, Devin Sports will join us with a scoreboard update you're listening to Fighting Camels Football. Lately, 3 to nothing at the break over Birmingham Southern. Fact after this timeout. McDonald's presents Confessions of a Fake Folk Fan. Don't judge me. I just really liked mochas. But soon I started wearing clogs and playing mandolin and dating lazy beatniks. But McDonald's McCafe mochas took me away from all that. Now I'm wearing synthetics and listening to hip-hop again. Thank you, McDonald's. McCafe mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos from McDonald's. With fresh ground espresso and real steamed milk, it's all the coffee, all the attitude. At participating McDonald's. Located in the heart of eastern North Carolina, the trophy case is the preferred custom trophy and award shop of the Fighting Camels. Each trophy is assembled with care and attention to detail is paid to each award, ensuring it conveys your pride of achievement. The trophy case also offers interior signage, custom engraving and artwork, and in-house embroidery. Stop by 125 North Wilson Street in Dunn or give us a call at 1-888-679-0958. 1-888-679-0958. The trophy case in Dunn is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. Did you know that regular oil changes will only add miles to your engine? That's right. Changing your engine oil regularly will help lubricate the engine, minimize friction, and carry away excessive heat, all of which will lead to greater fuel efficiency. Stop by Sunshine Car Care in Lillington today to get your oil checked and learn what else you can do to increase your fuel mileage. Sunshine Car Care, 1643 North Main Street, Lillington, 910-893-8374. Sunshine Car Care in Lillington is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. 
Triangle Orthopedics, team physicians for the fighting camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. And welcome to Sunshine Clark Hair Studio. I'm Devin Swartz. At the half, the Campbell Fighting Camels lead the Birmingham Southern Panthers 3-0. We'll send it back to Booty's Creek, North Carolina for the second half after a look at scores and schedules from around the country. Starting off in the Pioneer League, one game played Thursday night. Chris Creighton got his first win in his first game as head coach of the Drake Bulldogs, defeating Upper Iowa 17-13. The Bulldogs started off quite sluggish, trailing 10-0 in the first 20 minutes and only picking up two first downs. But two defensive plays in the second quarter woke up the Bulldogs. Tim Harvey's interception led to Drake's first touchdown, and Spencer Cady performed a very rare feat, stripping the ball from a punter. That play led to a touchdown two plays later and a 14-10 lead at the half, a lead they never relinquished on route to a 17-13 win. A Pioneer League game was also played last night. San Diego ran the football championship subdivision's longest home winning streak to 25 games with a 40-22 victory against future PFL member Marist at Torero Stadium. First-year quarterback Seb Trujillo threw four touchdowns in his first collegiate start, completing 16 of 23 passes for 191 yards. Senior running back J.T. Rogan caught the game's first touchdown, a 29-yard catch, but would leave the game due to an injury later in the first quarter and did not return. And now for today's action in the Pioneer League. Birmingham Southern and Campbell, the only afternoon game today. And as I mentioned earlier, 3-0 at half. The second half is just minutes away right here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Later today, the Jacksonville Dolphins go on the road to play Savannah State. Kickoff there is at 3.30. And in the nightcap, Moorhead State hosts Southern Virginia at 7 p.m. There is one Sunday game in the Pioneer League schedule. The Dayton Flyers will take on Central State University at 5 p.m. tomorrow in Muscatine, Iowa. Now to the Division I Bowl subdivision and the AP Top 25 in the second quarter. Number one, Georgia, leads Georgia Southern 17 to nothing. In the third quarter, number two, Ohio State, leads Youngstown State 26 to nothing. In the second quarter, it is number five, Florida, beating Hawaii 28 to nothing. In the fourth quarter, number seven, LSU, is rounding Appalachian State 34 to 10. In the third quarter, number 13, Wisconsin, leads Akron 17 to 10 in a close one. Closer, though, is number 17, Virginia Tech, right now with a three-point lead over East Carolina 16 to 13. Number 22, Penn State, leads Coastal Carolina 38 to 7 in the third quarter. And at halftime, number 25, Pitt, leads Bowling Green 17 to 14. There are no finals, but there are a slew of games happening later this afternoon. Starting at 3.30, would be number 3, Southern Cal, taking on Virginia. And number 8, West Virginia, taking on Villanova. At 6 o'clock, number 16, Brigham Young, takes on Northern Iowa. And then a slew of games at 7 o'clock, number 4, Oklahoma, takes on Chattanooga. Number 10, Auburn, takes on Louisiana Monroe. Number 11, Texas, with Florida Atlantic. Number 12, Texas Tech, takes on Eastern Washington, number 14 Kansas takes on Florida International, and number 19 takes on Tennessee Martin. All of those games taking place at 7 o'clock tonight. At 8 p.m., we'll see two top 25 teams go against each other, number 24 Alabama and number 9 Clemson. And at 8.30, another set of top 25 teams playing against each other, number 6 Missouri takes on number 20 Illinois. Two games at 10 o'clock, number 15 Arizona State takes on Northern Arizona, and number 21 Oregon takes on Washington. And now let's go closer to home with scores in the ACC. Upcoming this afternoon, already mentioned USC and Virginia that takes place at 3.30. Delaware and Maryland will take place at 3.45. At 6 o'clock, it'll be North Carolina taking on McNeese State. At 7 o'clock, it'll be Duke taking on James Madison. And at 7.30, Kent State will host Boston College. And, of course, Alabama Clemson mentioned just a few seconds ago that takes place at 8 o'clock tonight. And, finally, some scores of local interest. Already mentioned, but we'll say it again. Number 17, Virginia Tech is barely holding on to a lead over East Carolina, 16-13. And reiterating again the LSU Appalachian State score, it is 34-10 in the fourth quarter. And one final reminder, Elon College will take on the Richmond Spiders tonight at 7 o'clock. And that will do it for the Sunshine Clark Care scoreboard. In just a moment, we'll get back to Booty's Creek, North Carolina, for the second half of Campbell fighting Camels football. The Camels lead 3-0 at the half. This is the Campbell University Radio Network. 
Campus Habitat is a premier student-only apartment complex located directly across from Campbell University. At Campus Habitat, you will find an apartment designed with your college experience in mind. Our apartments are available fully furnished and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. Don't you love cold winter nights wrapped up in your favorite blanket with a good book or with that special person hearing the crackle and feeling the warmth of your fireplace? Wait, there's only one thing wrong with this picture. You don't have a fireplace. Complete your home this year with the new Heatmaster Fireplace from J.E. Womble and Sons, including mantle, firebox, blower, and gas logs. J.E. Womble and Sons also carries larger models, 36, 42, and 48-inch vent-free fireplaces. They're available with many options, like remote control, wall switches, thermostats, cabinet mantles, and many different styles. And installation is done by J.E. Womble and Sons. So go ahead, imagine yourself this winter curled up in front of your brand new Heatmaster fireplace and get down to J.E. Womble and Sons and the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington. Let's face it, meal time can be anything but relaxing with the kids around. Why not give yourself a break and bring the gang to Western Sizzlin? We love kids, which is why Western Sizzlin makes it a priority to have tons of kids' meal options. Oh, and steak lovers, Western Sizzlin serves nothing but the best. USDA choice, Western Sizzlin, 1810, West Cumberland Street in Dunn. And just think, after you've enjoyed your meal, the mess is on our house. Campus Habitat is the only student-only apartment complex located in the heart of the creek. Located just across the street from the newly constructed Convocation Center, Campus Habitat was created with the college student in mind. If you're looking to make the most of your college experience here at Campbell, call Campus Habitat today at 910-893-4607. Again, that's 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat created with you in mind. We'd like to thank Devin Schwartz back in the studio for that update of scores from across the country and the Pioneer League. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridgers back here at topside. Campbell leading Birmingham Southern by a score of 3 to nothing at the half thanks to a 30-yard field goal from Adam Willits, the freshman. Would have been good from about 45 or 50. So a nice kick by Willitson. Campbell has the advantage, and we welcome back in Mickey Bridgers in the broadcast and Mickey Boyd. This first half has really been marked with some big plays defensively by Campbell. It looked like Birmingham Southern on their second drive was on their way into the end zone. A fumble force. Franklin has it roll out the side of the end zone. A touchback. Campbell averts the disaster there defensively. And then Birmingham Southern missed a couple of uh, field goals as well from about 38 and 39 yards. They did, Robert. It's been a very strange first half based on the scouting report. Birmingham Southern came in here with a team from last year that passed more than they rushed, but obviously they left one of their best receivers at home. Uh, but they do have more rushing yards, and the rushing is coming from two, two individuals that we did not think that would be the, the key players in the running game, and that was Langston and Franklin. Campbell, is, on the other hand, is throwing the ball more uh, than, than rushing, which was kind of strange because we, we felt like Campbell was going to control the offensive line and create seams for Carl Smith. That hasn't happened yet. It certainly has not. We take a look at the numbers real quick from the first half. Campbell leading 3 to nothing, but Birmingham Southern has all the offense in terms of yardage and numbers. They had nine first downs to Campbell's five. They've outrushed the Camels by 70 yards, 107 to 37. And the passing yards, as you mentioned, Mickey, in favor of the Camels, 61 to 28. For Birmingham Southern, four of six for those 28 yards, while Campbell's six of 10 for 61. Total offensive plays, 31 for Birmingham Southern and 135 yards. 26 offensive plays for Campbell and 98 yards. The only two kickoffs that have been returned were by Birmingham Southern for a total of 47 yards. Campbell averaging nearly 28 yards on four punts, while Birmingham Southern is averaging 29 yards on two punts. The only turnover of the ballgame was a fumble by Birmingham Southern through the end zone. The time of possession pretty even, even though Birmingham Southern has a three-minute advantage in that category, 16-44 to 13-16. For the Camels, third down conversions have been poor for both teams. Birmingham Southern, two for six, while Campbell is just one 
for seven. Individual numbers for Birmingham Southern. Langston, their tailback, has been the biggest surprise. Six carries for 46 yards, while Franklin, one of their wide receivers on end rounds, has carried it eight times for 45 yards, all told, averaging nearly six yards per carry. Their quarterback, Joe Thigpen, has seven carries for just nine yards. And Walter Arrington, who is expecting to play a little bit more in this ballgame, just three carries and seven yards. Joe Thigpen, four of six. We mentioned 28 yards. He's been sacked a couple of times. Receiving Walker, Rodriguez, and Tunnel all have a catch. Walker has two for ten, while Rodriguez has one for twelve, and Tunnel one for six. For Campbell University, running the football, it's been Kyle Smith 11 times for 48 yards and a 4.4 yard average. Jordan Kramer has carried it one time, did not gain a foot, and Matt Bolano. Four carries has netted 11 yards of losses. He has been sacked at one time and on a couple of runs has also lost some footing and lost yardage. Mavilano, five of eight, throwing it for 54 yards along the 17, while Wesley Snow has thrown it twice and completed one pass for seven yards. Kelvin Murphy, three catches, 34 yards. Carl Blaine, a catch for 17 yards. Paul Constantine has a catch and seven yards. And Ray Griffiths with a tough catch for three yards. We mentioned Brennan Burke. Has punted it three times. He's had one block. His punt average on 120 yards on three punts, 40-yard average and a long of 58. That was down at the 11-yard line for the Camels. Taking a look at defensive numbers right now, John Flory leads the way with three tackles for the Camels. The only scoring came with eight seconds left to go the first quarter as Adam Willits kicked it in from 30 yards out. And that is where we stand right now, Campbell 3. And Birmingham Southern, nothing. We're going to step aside, take a break. When we return, second half action from the newly named Barker Lane Stadium here at Campbell University. You're listening to Campbell University Football on the Campbell University Radio Network. Curly C's IGA has always been a proud supporter of Campbell University and the Fighting Camels. But Carly C's IGA is also proud of all 12 of its hometowns. From Lillington to Fayetteville, from Spring Lake to Benson, Carly C's IGA has always been the store big enough to serve you, yet small enough to know you. We have always and will continue to bring you the biggest name brands at the lowest possible prices. Stop by one of our 12 locations and see why we always say Carly C's IGA is hometown proud. For over 25 years, McPhail's Pharmacy has served Campbell University and our surrounding communities with the professional care and comfort that you have come to expect from our team of dedicated professionals. McPhail's Pharmacy, located in the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington or 105 East H Street in Irwin, combines quality, dependability, and state-of-the-art systems in order to bring you the best in pharmaceutical services. Please stop by and see us at one of our two convenient locations or visit us online at McPhailsPharmacy.com. We welcome everyone back to Barker Lane Stadium here on the campus of Campbell University. Just a couple of minutes before we start the second half, Robert Harper and Mickey Richards. The Camels lead three to nothing thanks to a 30-yard boot from Adam Willits and Mickey as we head to the second half. Maybe what are some of the things the Camels have to do uh, to improve on their first half of play and put a few more points on the scoreboard? Well, I think it's going to take more than three points to win this football game. Uh, Campbell has to probably throw the ball more on first down, uh, create uh, more formation mismatches. Right now we've came out in the first half and uh, Campbell decided that they were going to try to control the line of scrimmage and uh, did not have a lot of success running the football. Uh, concerns that I have are the, the punting game and the kickoff coverage. Uh, fortunately, Campbell will be re receiving the kickoff to start the second half. Today's Triangle Orthopedic Doctor of the Game is Campbell team physician Dr. William D. Haggett, 1896 graduate of the Duke University Medical School. Dr. Haggett has been serving the fighting Camels for the past five years. Dr. Egg specializes in arthroscopic treatment of knee and shoulder injuries such as ACL tears, cartilage injuries, rotator cuff tears, and shoulder instability. Once again, today's Triangle Orthopedic Doctor of the Game is Dr. William Egg. To find out more about Triangle Orthopedic, visit them online at triangleortho.com. We are just moments away from the start of the second half. Campbell, as you mentioned, Mickey will get the football first. What would a good opening drive of this second half B for Campbell University. Well, I think it's important to be able to maintain a drive. You know, it doesn't appear that Campbell's going to be able to strike quick. Uh, three or four first downs, uh, keep the defense fresh, mix in some play-action pass, uh, 
throw more on first downs, and I think that would probably open up the running game for Carl Smith. Just awaiting the two teams to head out onto the football field, but we are about set for third quarter action here from Barker Lane Stadium. We mentioned that the name had changed at halftime. Started out CU Football Stadium, but the naming rights have been sold here, and now everybody excited about the possibilities of what's going to happen now uh, with this football stadium when it comes to new construction, which uh, is supposed to set to begin sometime in the spring of next year. But Campbell will get the football first here to start the second half. Back deep to receive will be Bauer and Brandon Chandler, I believe. And it is Bauer and Chandler to return the kick for Campbell University. Kicking things off will be place kicker Jared Spooner, the freshman from Trinity, Alabama, has shown good leg. The problem is it hasn't always been in the right direction. So the ball spotted at the 30, and it is Bauer and Chandler awaiting the kick at their own 15-yard line. And the third quarter is underway. A high end over end kick that's going to come down and bounce right at Chandler, who makes a nice stab of the football at the 26 and then falls to avoid the contact. And so Campbell will get it first and 10 at their own 26 yard line. That was a great play. Uh, we had a big hole on the coverage team there. The ball hit the ground, and if uh, Brad Bauer was not at that position, we would have been in a real bad shape because. Uh, Birmingham Southern would have had the ball on the short field. So we'll see what type of adjustments Campbell University has made offensively and likewise for the Birmingham Southern defense, even though defensively they were pretty solid in that first half. Matt Milano out as Campbell will have it moving from right to left. Two receivers in the formation to the right side, one to the left, and Carl Smith to the right of Milano who's in the shotgun. Milano looks over the defense. He'll call for the snap. Now drop back to throw. Looks right, throws right. Pass is going to be caught by Severance here on the near side. Up near the 34-yard line, so call it a gain of close to eight yards for Campbell University on fir first down. And Matt Milano continues to impress offensively, throwing the football now for Campbell University. That is the pass that Campbell needs to throw, a short possession pass, uh, uh, just like a running play, uh, short about seven or eight. Uh, and Matt Milano does a great job with that. Same formation for Campbell. Ball spotted near hash now. Second down and a long three. They're going to hand it off to Smith. Smith going to cut it up, has first down yardage, breaks through the initial pursuit across the 40 and out of the 41-yard line. It'll the stop with Zach Napier, the sophomore from Bessemer, Alabama. And Campbell has an opening first down here in the second half. Two things that Campbell did a great job, I thought, offensively in the first half was the misdirection run in the short passing game. And those were the two plays that Campbell came out with on the very first two plays of the second half. So Carl Smith now with 55 yards on the ground after that carry. And once again, three wide receivers, one back, Milano in the gun. 13.59 to go, third quarter, Campbell three, Birmingham Southern nothing. Milano wants to throw, steps up. Now he's got room to run across the 45. He's going to try to work to the far side of the field and get out of bounds. He'll will be run out of bounds right at midfield. But that's a close to, to a gain of nine yards. And so a nice job by Milano to avoid pursuit. Great decision, great blocking. The, re the re returners, the, the receivers ran great routes. It was uh, outstanding coverage by Birmingham Southern. Matt Villano saw a hole in the middle. He took off and did a great job. So it'll be second down and a short one for Campbell right at midfield. Three wide receivers, two to the left, one to the right. Villano in the gun. Carl Smith joins Villano in that shotgun formation. And now flags will fly a lot of movement up front. And this might be a false start against the offensive unit. We'll have to wait and see. I think Andy Johnson, the left guard, was a little quick. So Johnson's movement early will force Campbell into a second down and six situation at their own 45-yard line. But with 13.45 to go, the offense has looked good so far here in this third quarter. They lead three to nothing to the Camels. They would like to add to it here, if at all possible. Campbell breaks the huddle, second and six. Two receivers left. Griffiths is the slot that way. One wide receiver to the right, that's Severance. He already has a catch on this drive. Milano in the gun with one back. Takes the snap, looks left. He's under some pressure, throws. Pass is going to be caught by Murphy right at the 49-yard line of Birmingham Southern. That should be good enough for a Campbell first down. Call it a gain of six. And so Campbell will move the chains one more time. Campbell has found a, uh, a holes in the defensive secondary. They're run, the receivers are running good routes. It is a first down. 
Campbell is moving the football, and that is a, a great momentum factor here early in the third quarter. So Bellano now with three consecutive completions. He's 6 for 10 for 52 yards on the day. So Campbell continuing to throw it well as they spot the ball at the 49 of Birmingham Southern. Same formation. They'll send two receivers to the wide side of the field. That's Volano's right. One wide receiver left, and here is Carl Smith beside Volano in the gun. He'll get the handoff. Work left, has room, cuts it up, and will gain about five yards before he's swarmed under defensively. Napier in on the stop along with Mike Stonewall, the defensive end from Birmingham, Alabama, but it is a gain of close to five. Second down and a long five upcoming with 12.35 to go. Rolling third quarter clock. The key to this drive is first down. Campbell is picking up five, six, seven yards on on first downs, and that's why they're moving the football. So two receivers left, one to the right. Same formation that Campbell has used throughout this drive. Second down and a long five. Pavolano in the gun, takes the snap, looks left, wants to throw the football pass. is going to be compi- complete to Cairo Blaine down at the 29-yard line. In on the coverage from Birmingham Southern was Micah Baker, but he got there a little too late. And a big gain for Campbell University, a gain of close to 25 yards. A lot of credit has to go to the coaching staff. They went in at halftime. They realized that the running game was not there, so they've opened it up and, and throwing more on first downs. Excuse me, a gain of 15 yards. For Carl Bladel, that hook up from Matt Villano. And now two receivers to the right. Alex Royal, the wide receiver to the left. 11.55 to go. Campbell threatening to score here in the third. They hand the ball off to Carl Smith. Lowers his shoulder. Runs in the back of one of his offensive linemen. And falls forward for maybe a gain of a yard. Maybe two. And it'll bring up second down and long for Campbell University. But you have to be impressed with Matt Villano so far here in the second half. He has really been able to find the open receiver, make good throws, and fortunately for Campbell, they've been able to hang on to the football. Villano was the victim of a couple of drops in the first half. I think a lot of times you go in at halftime and you you reevaluate yourself, and I'm sure Matt Villano and Wesley Snow know they can do a much better job than they did in the first half. So second down and nine officially. Ball spotted at the 28-yard line of Birmingham Southern. Kramer now, the running back to Volano's left. Volano under pressure, and he's going to be dropped on the blitz by the linebacker for Birmingham Southern, Chase Dickinson. So Dickinson drops Volano all the way back near the 36-yard line, and with 10.55 to go, Campbell facing third and really, really long now. Birmingham Southern made an adjustment. They realized they had to put more pressure on the Campbell offense. They uh, blitzed the linebacker in the middle. Jordan Kramer would, it was open across the middle in a little circle route, but uh, could not find him. So third and 18 officially as the ball is spotted at the 36. Volano into the gun. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Here comes the blitz again. Volano trying to roll away from it. Needs to throw the football. Now he will get rid of it, but Constantine couldn't hang on to it at about the 26-yard line. It would not have been good enough for a first down anyways. And so now... It'll bring up fourth down and a long 18 from the 36-yard line, and Campbell may be punting the football here. I don't know if there is enough leg on that sideline to get the football through the upright, so it will bring on the punter, Brennan Burt, from New York to punt it again for the fifth time today. He's had one block, but the other three, an average of 40 yards a punt, including a long of 56. They'd like for him to corner Birmingham Southern deep in their own end here. The snap is through a little low, but Burt gets it away. This is an end over end kick that Langston's going to fair catch it about his own 11 and a half, call it the 12 yard line. So not a bad punt at all as you get Birmingham Southern deep in their own end at the 12, and that is where Birmingham Southern will start their first offensive possession of the second half. I think the important part about Campbell's uh, success at this point has been their defense. The offense and the punting team has pinned Birmingham Southern inside the 15-yard line at the 12-yard line. Now Joe Thigpen's got to go 88 yards against the Campbell defense that has played outstanding. So after four minutes and 46 seconds on that drive for Campbell University, they punt it away to Birmingham Southern, who will send Thigpen into the gun. A back to either side, and they're going to hand the ball off to Arrington, who's going to cut it up across the 10. will drag Milton Brown with him to the 15-yard line, but that's all. So a gain of about three. 
bringing up second down and seven, but a good pursuit by Brown from that middle linebacker spot, keeping Erickson from picking up a huge chunk of yards. It was good pursuit. Uh, Campbell has to be very careful. That was an option play. Joe Thigpen, if he kept the ball, he would have had big yardage. So it'll be second down and seven from the 15. Two receivers right. Thigpen going to hand it off to Arrington. He swarmed under and he'll lose about a yard and a half. Boy, the defense really keying on Arrington there. As it on the stop was Milton Brown again, the middle linebacker reading the play nicely. Also, the defensive front helped out by Campbell's Freddie Shine, the freshman from Concord, North Carolina, at that defensive tackle spot. What's really surprised me at this point, uh, Birmingham Southern was a team that threw the ball all over the field and a lot of screens, and they haven't done that. Two receivers, or excuse me, three receivers right. Arrington will stand to thick pins right in the gun, who will roll right. Wants to throw the football, steps up under pressure. Pass is going to fall incomplete. It was intended over the middle for the wide receiver, Tay Walker, but it was two camels and Christian Dinkson and Dante Washington who were close who were closest to the football and so Thickpen really averting disaster there. Great series for the defensive side of the football for Camel. Three plays and out. That's exactly how you want to play great defense. It'll be Bauer back deep to receive the punt of Drew Jackson. Jackson a low line drive kick that Bauer is going to catch at about his own 46. Bojangles knows tailgaters. Before you even get to the game, there can be a vicious throwdown. Everybody fighting over what to get, how much to get. That's why Bojangles, home of the original and best tailgate special, has expanded their lineup so there's plenty of options. Starting lineup, the original tailgate special. Eight pieces of Cajun fried chicken, two picnic-sized fixins, four made from scratch buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of iced tea. Or upsize to the Super Tailgate Special. Twelve pieces of chicken, three picnic-sized fixins, six buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of tea. Still not enough? Let's call in the big guy. The new Jumbo Tailgate Special. Twenty pieces of Cajun fried chicken, four picnic-sized fixins, a dozen made-from-scratch biscuits, and a gallon of iced tea. And if you like your chicken off the bone, there's the Supreme Tailgate Special that includes twelve whole-breast tenderloin fillets. The great debate over where the tailgate is over. Everybody can agree on Bojangles. It's more than delicious. It's tradition. Oh, 11 yards on that carry. 71 now for Carl Smith. Milano drops back, wants to throw it. He's going to have to step up, and now a holding going to be called as the flag comes in late. But Milano dropped on the play by the defensive end, Jeremy Jones. And it'll bring up. Second down and long regardless. And I believe if you're Eddie Garfinkel, you decline this penalty and force Campbell into second and long as opposed to first and 20. Field position is going to make a difference in this call. And it is. It's going to be declined. And it will bring up second down and close to 16 as the ball spotted at the Birmingham Southern 43-yard line. So 8-16 to go first, or excuse me, third quarter. Campbell three, Birmingham Southern nothing. Campbell with it. Second down at 16 at the Panther. 43-yard line. Bellotto in the gun. Two receivers left, one to the right. They're going to hand the basket, the football off to Kyle Smith, and Smith is going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. The entire defensive front for the Panthers in on the stop, led by Oren Olds, they junior from Adamsville, Alabama, and a transfer from Miles College. I think Campbell would love to have that call back. Uh, Birmingham Southern had seven in the box. They were anticipating the run, uh, either by formation or tendencies, and uh, Carl didn't really ha didn't have anywhere to go. So now, two receivers to the right, two to the left, and it's third down and really long for the Campbells. Call it third at 16. Milano into the gun. He's been in the shotgun all series long, all second half long, in fact. He dropped the snap, and he picks it up, but he had his knee on the ground. McDonald's presents Confessions of a Fake Folk Fan. Don't judge me. I just really liked mochas. But soon I started wearing clogs and playing mandolin and dating lazy beatniks. 
but McDonald's McCafe Mocha's took me away from all that. Now I'm wearing synthetics and listening to hip hop again. Thank you, McDonald's. McCafe Mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos from McDonald's. With fresh ground espresso and real steamed milk, it's all the coffee, all the attitude. At participating McDonald's. Nice defensive play, I believe, by Chandler, and they may have roughed the putter, and if they've done that, it will give Campbell an automatic first down. A couple things happened there. Uh, obviously, uh, Birmingham Southern was coming after the punt, try to block it. Fortunately for Campbell, it was roughing the punter. Also, the returner for Birmingham Southern did not have any protection and made a bad decision And when, when he tried to catch the ball on the run. And usually when you see a team come after a punt, the guy who's deep, Coach, is always told to pretty much fair catch the football because you're exposed. He was exposed. He got hit hard. But I believe it's going to be romping the punter and an automatic first down for Campbell. Sometimes in a football game, especially in the second half, a uh, Certain plays make a difference in the game, and this could be one of those difference makers. Actually, I don't think it is roughing the putter. It may have been against Campbell, or either that or they picked it up. We'll have to wait and see. It looks like Campbell's on defense. So Campbell will come out defensively here. I thought it was uh, for sure roughing the punter, but it'll be first and ten for Birmingham Southern nonetheless. At their own 19-yard line is where they're going to spot it. So thick pin in the gun, three receivers right, one to the left. Campbell still leading three to nothing here as we roll inside six minutes and 30 seconds to play third quarter. Thick pin in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Arrington, who's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage and fall forward for two yards. Boy, that defensive front getting a nice little push, and I believe it was Flurry, the linebacker, in there to make the initial hit. And so it'll bring up second down at eight. Campbell did a great job up front with the linebackers reading their keys. Uh, kept uh, Walter Arrington in, at bay. So second down at eight. A receiver each way, two wing backs and a running back to big pins right in the shotgun. Ball spotted far hash. Birmingham Southern moving left to right. Big pin wants to throw it. Now he's going to step up and run it and will fall forward across the 25 to the 26. Call it a gain of five. And it'll bring up third down at three as Thigpen and his offense going to the hurry-up offense. They're not huddling now. Campbell did this a little bit earlier on and had some success. We'll see what Birmingham Southern decides to do here. I think a lot of times when you do this in, in your offensive formation, you, you get the signal from the sideline and you're trying to expose a weakness on the defensive by your formations. So third down at three, man in motion is Franklin. They're going to run the football, and they're going to pitch it out to Franklin late. He falls forward, but I don't believe he's going to have a first down as he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. E.J. Rasko says he does it, and it's John Fleury again on the stop. Well, on the option play, you have to get the support out on the perimeter from your outside linebacker and your secondary. Sometimes it's hard for the corners to make the play because they have to play the pass, so you, sometimes you get it from your safeties. Campbell going to leave their regular defense in here on fourth down and short. Uh, scared of the possibility that the punter, Drew Jackson, might try to throw the football, but he's going to punt it away. A line drive kick that Bauer is going to let bounce, and it's going to be downed quickly by Birmingham Southern right at the 39-yard line by Mitch Swanson, the defensive back from Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. He's a graduate of Nice High School, which produced Tim Tebow, who's playing for the Gators right now. He actually did Campbell a favor when it bounced up real high because it had potential to roll another 10 yards. Yeah, it certainly did, but Campbell will get it first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. And once again, it'll be Matt Milano, the quarterback. Carl Smith has been at tailback the entire ballgame, has not gotten a breather as of yet. Two receivers, Royal to the right, and now Murphy to the left, and now timeout has been called by Birmingham Southern. We have a timeout on the field. Back after this timeout, Campbell leading 3 to nothing on the Campbell University Radio Network. McDonald's presents Confessions of a Fake Folk Fan. Don't judge me. I just really liked mochas. But soon I started wearing clogs and playing mandolin and dating lazy beatniks. But McDonald's McCafe mochas took me away from all that. Now I'm wearing synthetics and listening to hip-hop again. Thank you, McDonald's. McCafe mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos from McDonald's. With fresh ground espresso and real steamed milk, it's all the coffee, all the attitude. At participating McDonald's. We welcome everyone back to Campbell University Football Stadium, now named Barker Lane Stadium. Your official attendance, 5,845. 
That is the largest athletic event ever held here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. So the timeout over. Campbell with the football first and ten at their own 39-yard line. They lead three to nothing here in the third quarter. I think Campbell's got to get back doing what they did on the first series. And they'll send Bellotto under center, receiver each way, Smith the tailback. And they're going to run a stretch play to the right side. Smith going to try to cut it up, lowers his shoulder, and he'll have four and maybe even five yards as he gets up near the 45-yard line. I thought the offensive line did a great job of maintaining uh, no penetration and stretching out that defensive line, and Carl Smith was able to find a hole. 17 carries now 77 yards for Carl Smith on the day, continuing to rack up the yardage, especially here in the second half. Second down and call it officially four. Ball spotted on just the Campbell side of the 45-yard line. A receiver each way. Milano going to hand it off to Carl Smith, who's going to be caught up in the backfield, breaks a tackle, continuing to work hard, has a first down across midfield, tracking Birmingham Southern defenders all the way down to the 46-yard line of the Panthers. Nice to run by Carl Smith. He was able to avoid the initial hit and then was able to take tacklers with him across the first down yard as necessary and then pick up a few more on top of that. Great run by Carl Smith. The formation created a situation where Birmingham was overloaded on one side, Campbell had a tight end and two flankers on one side, which created a strength problem, and uh, Campbell ran back to the weak side. Ball spotted at the 47-yard line of the Panthers. Campbell has spent most of the second half in Panther territory. However, they have not scored. With 3.49 to go, third quarter, still 3 to nothing. They're going to hand it off to Rashawn Brown, who's in the ballgame for the first time, but he gets a carry up to about the 45. Carl Smith needing a breather there. Rashawn Brown, an interesting story out of high school, he is a 5'8", 211-pound freshman from Winston-Salem, 2,770 yards his last two years of high school. That's pretty impressive. He also scored 31 touchdowns. Maybe a Rashawn Brown could sneak one through here. This would be a great time for Campbell to score. That'd Rashawn Brown is a very stocky build at 5'8", uh, 211. He's actually a little bit heavier than Carl Smith, and Brown will remain in the game with Volano here. 3.08 to go. Third quarter, Campbell three, Birmingham Southern nothing. And Milano takes the shotgun snap, looks right, wants to throw the football. Now he's going to step up. He's under some pressure, and he's going to be sacked back at his own 49-yard line. And Bobby Gray, the junior from Raleigh, Mississippi, in Jones County Junior College, able to make the play, and it'll bring up third down and long. Matt's got to be able to make that decision a little quicker, throw the ball out of bounds, avoid the sack. So 2.37 to go in this third quarter, and Campbell facing yet another third and long, and every time it looks like they're going to get something going, Mickey, it's a defense for Birmingham Southern makes a nice play. A lot of times early in the season, consistency and identity are two things it takes a while to figure out on offense. So two receivers left, two to the right, Bellano in the shotgun with Carl Smith, and now a whistle sounds and timeout has been called, and Dale Steele is not happy on the far sideline. So a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Campbell leads Birmingham Southern 3-0 here on the Campbell University Radio Network. For over 25 years, McPhail's Pharmacy has served Campbell University and our surrounding communities with the professional care and comfort that you have come to expect from our team of dedicated professionals. McPhail's Pharmacy, located in the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington or 105 East H Street in Irwin, combines quality, dependability, and state-of-the-art systems in order to bring you the best in pharmaceutical services. Please stop by and see us at one of our two convenient locations or visit us online at McPhailsPharmacy.com. Steelworks and White Knuckle Graphics are both located at 39A, Gary Denning Lane and Anger. Top quality custom wrap designs for the street, water, or dirt. Custom paint, banners, stickers, and wholesale printing. They also have a top quality steelwork, golf carts, muffler repair, just anything you may need. Steelworks and White Knuckle Graphics can deliver. Campbell University leading 3 to nothing over Birmingham Southern. 2.13 left, timeout almost over for the Camels. And it has certainly been... A second half that Campbell has dominated, unfortunately, they haven't put any more points on the board. Very important that Campbell on offense, and the defense is, is resting. So 
Let's face it, mealtime can be anything but relaxing with the kids around. Why not give yourself a break and bring the gang to Western Sizzlin? We love kids, which is why Western Sizzlin makes it a priority to have tons of kids' meal options. Oh, and steak lovers, Western Sizzlin serves nothing but the best. USDA choice, Western Sizzlin, 1810 West Cumberland Street in Dunn. And just think, after you've enjoyed your meal, the mess is on our house. As he awaits the punt at his own 10. Man running on late for Campbell University. Seven seconds on the play clock. Snap is through to Burt. Now it's a low end over end kick that's angling towards the right. It's going to bounce and roll. Langston has trouble with it. Now picks it up, breaks a couple of tackles, but he'll fall forward just to the 17 yard line. Boy. That was almost disaster for Birmingham Southern there and a gift for Campbell University. But he was able to fingertip it in and uh, pick up a couple of yardage, a couple of yards on the return. If our coverage had been just a step quicker, we could have hit Langston and the ball would have been on the ground. We could have picked it up and put it in the end zone. So it will bring up first and ten for Birmingham Southern. They've started every drive here the second half inside their own 20. This one will start at the 18. For Thick Pin, he'll be in the gun all by himself. Two receivers each way, a wing back to the left. 157 to go here this third quarter. Campbell three, Birmingham Southern nothing. The defense has been spectacular for Campbell so far here in this second half. And Thick Pin wants to throw the football. Deep pass is going to be nearly intercepted by Chandler on the far side. Great coverage. They were running a fade. The throw was a little bit uh, inside. You really want that throw to be more on the outside shoulder of the receiver. First time we've seen Birmingham Souther take a shot downfield. They were looking for Luke Chapman, but Chandler with perfect coverage. He sealed his man against the sideline. There was no way Chapman was going to get to the football unless he climbed Chandler's back. Did a great job on the coverage. So a receiver each way. They put another running back in the backfield. That is Brad Stockdale. It looks like, no, it's Langston, excuse me. Numbers got a little confused. They're going to hand on the end around uh, to uh, Jonathan Williams. Williams has big yardage, has first down yardage across the 25 to 30, and will go down at the 33. They ran an end around. Campbell's pursuit had been so good in the second half, but uh, used that against them as they were able to run that end around and get to the little running back. Jonathan Williams free for a first down. Great call by Birmingham Southern. Probably one of the biggest plays of the game was by Brad Bauer on defense to keep that from going all the way. 14 yards on that carry. As Thigpen has Birmingham Southern's first first down of the second half with 90 seconds to go third quarter. Thigpen going to try to keep left side, break through a tackle before he is dropped on the play after a gain of about three or four. He was hung up around the ankles by the Campbell defensive front. And I believe it was E.J. Rasco in there for Campbell, who made a nice little play. And it'll bring up second down, and he close to five. He picked up five on that play. Didn't look like much, but he gained positive yardage. Did not get the pursuit. Four wide receivers set here. Big pin awaiting the snap. Looks over the Campbell defense. They'll send Langston in motion. They're going to fake the handoff to Langston. And now Big Pen trying to cut it up. I believe he's going to lose about a half a yard there. Campbell not fooled there on that fake handoff. And the defensive front was in there on the stop. And again, I believe it was E.J. Rasco along with Jason Hill who made the stop. Big play coming up. It's going to be about third and five. Uh, Campbell needs to be able to stop Birmingham Southern here. If not, uh, Birmingham Southern is working field position. So third down and five, under 20 seconds to go third quarter. They will have to snap the football, the play clock, about a second ahead of the game clock. Big Ben in the gun, wants to throw the football. He's going to throw it left, has a receiver open. That's the receiver, Jackson, who's going to make the catch at the Campbell 40, cut up to the 35, and will be dropped at the 34-yard line in on the tackle for Campbell University, and a touchdown tape saving tackle was Cody Lyon, but that's the biggest pass play of the ball game for either team with five and a half seconds left to go in the third quarter, and certainly that gives Birmingham Southern some life here in the second half. That's the biggest play they've had. Joe Thickpen, we knew he had the potential to make big plays. The reverse earlier on this drive was a big play that got the momentum going. And that will send us to the fourth quarter. Campbell, as the third quarter comes to an end, leads by a score of 3 to nothing. We're going to step inside and take a break. When we come back, more fighting Campbell's football here on the Campbell University Radio Network. 
Located in the heart of eastern North Carolina, the trophy case is the preferred custom trophy and award shop of the Fighting Camels. Each trophy is assembled with care and attention to detail is paid to each award, ensuring it conveys your pride of achievement. The trophy case also offers interior signage, custom engraving and artwork, and in-house embroidery. Stop by 125 North Wilson Street in Dunn or give us a call at 1-888-679-0958. 1-888-679-0958. The trophy case in Dunn is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. Triangle Orthopedics, team physicians for the Fighting Camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridges, the start of the fourth quarter. And with 15 minutes on the clock, Campbell leads 3 to nothing. They're looking for an opening game victory. Trying to hold on to a field goal that they made with eight seconds left to go that first, half, uh, first quarter. First down at 10 for Birmingham Southern as we start this fourth quarter at the Campbell 34. They're going to hand to Langston, who's caught up behind the line of scrimmage by Hill, but he couldn't make the tackle. Lights it across the 30, cuts back at the 25. It'll be dropped at about the 21-yard line. So a nice gain on the play of close to 13 yards for Langston. And it'll be yet another Birmingham Southern first down. Birmingham Southern's running a lot of motion. That seems to be creating some problems defensively for the Camels. So 14.51 to go. The clock set in motion. And Thigpen going to piss the ass the football out to Langston, who's going to cut it around the corner. He's going to be wrapped up by Milton Brown, but not before he has a gain of close to 10 yards he's dropped at the 13 so call it a gain of nine and that will bring up second down and a short one and now i believe timeout has been called by campbell university their second timeout of the second half 14 43 to go mickey and campbell uses the timeout we'll keep it right here but Birmingham Southern has gone to that hurry up, which worked some in the first half. It's definitely working here in the second. They've uh, done a great job on this series. They've exploited some weaknesses. Uh, Campbell's having a hard time making the plays at the line of scrimmage. The secondary is making too many tackles. Campbell's got to have a big play on this next series. Yep, they certainly do. They need to have a big play defensively to stymie the momentum that Birmingham Southern has built up here. Second down and one. With 14.43 to go, the timeout almost over. But second down and one. Three to nothing, the Camels lead here in the fourth quarter. We knew Joe Thigpen had the potential to make big plays, and he's an experienced quarterback. He was their starter last year. He hasn't panicked. They have a whole quarter to work with, and they're moving the football. So think pin into the shotgun here. Second down and one at the Campbell 13-yard line. They need to get to the 12 in order to pick up a fresh set of downs. Langston, the running back to his left. A receiver each way. Think pin calling for the snap. We'll receive, it at, we'll receive it after Franklin goes in motion. They hand it off to Langston straight up the middle, and he is knocked back, but not before he has a first down at the 10-yard line. A gain of three and a fresh set of downs. It should be first and goal for Birmingham Southern at the Campbell 10. Campbell's got to find a way to get some a negative yardage play. So 14.35 to go. A receiver each way. Two wing backs in Langston. Two thick pins left. Joe Thickpin sends Franklin in motion. Now he's going to run the football to the left, try to hang on to it, cuts it up. He's going to be wrapped up just shy of the goal line as he gets inside the five and down to the one. Call it a gain of nine. Another option play, Joe Thickpin took the ball and stretched it to the defense and almost put it in the end zone. So 14.05 to go, third or fourth quarter. Campbell leading 3 to nothing, but Birmingham Southern on the doorstep here. Joe Thinkpin will be in the shotgun. This is a power look from that spread offense as they're going to have three bats surrounding Thinkpin in the gun. They're probably more than likely going to keep it in their quarterback's hands. Thinkpin sends a man in motion. Now he's going to hand the football off to Arrington. I believe he snuffed out right at the line of scrimmage. May have even lost a half a yard. That was Arrington. Good job by the defensive line to get a good push. 
And it brings up second down and goal. Great job by the defensive line. A lot of penetration. Uh, Walter Arrington had nowhere to go. So 13.20 to go, rolling third quarter clock. Campbell clinging to that one field goal. They kicked with eight seconds left to go of the first quarter. Dick Penn will spread it out this time. Lanks it to his left. Dick Penn sends the man in motion. He's going to keep the football left side. Cut it up. Touchdown, Birmingham Southern. And so the first touchdown of the ball game comes with 12.58 to go here in this fourth quarter. And the Panthers have taken a 6-3 in lead. The defense was able to keep Joe Thickpen and Birmingham Southern's offense out of the end zone until the fourth quarter. Now it's time for the offense to take the ball and put, and put it in the end zone themselves. So on to attempt the extra point for Birmingham Southern. Or main, well, we'll come in Raymond Joseph, a senior from Vestavia, Alabama. A straight-on kicker. You don't see that very often, but I was watching him in warm-ups. He kicks it from straight on, and this is in place of Jared Spooner, who missed two extra points earlier. So this, this may be a situation where they just want to take the pressure off Gerald Spooner, the freshman, uh, give this young man a chance to kick the ball. And this is a big extra point because it makes it to where Campbell has to score a touchdown in order to win this game. So Joseph on to attempt the extra point. A Vestavia Hills graduate. And as Campbell awaits John Flurry's exit. He was shaken up on the play. He's now at the sideline. It seems fine as he's walking under his own power. The 12.58 to go here. And Birmingham Southern has taken the lead. 6-3, to three, trying to make it 7-3 to three with the extra point. The snap is down. The kick is on the way by Joseph. It is up. And it is no good. Wide right. So it remains a three-point game. 12.58 to go. It's now Birmingham Southern 6 and Campbell 3 on the Campbell University Radio Network. So we'll keep it right here. 12.58 to go here in this second half. And Campbell trails now 6-3 to three to Birmingham Southern. A nice drive by Birmingham Southern to take the lead here in the final moments, or at least in the final quarter of this football game. A lot of time left. Uh, Campbell doesn't need to panic. Uh, the offense controlled the ball in the third quarter. They had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of success throwing the ball early on first downs and making it uh, short on second downs. I think they need to do that. I think they need to throw the ball a little more vertical. They're throwing the ball just a short passing game of seven, eight to ten yard passes. They need to stretch the defense. Uh, they need to run some misdirection with a wide receiver. Sort of like what Birmingham Southern did when they made the big play. So we'll see what Campbell is able to do here now that they're down in the ball game for the first time. Jared Spooner, the freshman, set to kick it off. And it is going to be Chandler and Bauer back deep to receive. And this is another high kick. This one will come down, excuse me, to Washington at his own 20-yard line. He's able to make his way up to about the 29 before he's dropped on the play by Chris Rodriguez, the wide receiver from Foley, Alabama. So a big possession here for Campbell. They now trail 6-3 to three with 12.50 to go here in the third quarter, or excuse me, fourth quarter. Campbell needs to take advantage of some opportunities here. They need to move the ball down the field. They need to rest their defense, and it's important to be able to put points on the board. Campbell fans being urged by some of the faithful here to get up and help this football team. But it'll be Volano with the football at the 29-yard line as he works from under center. Two receivers left and Carl Smith to back. Volano's going to roll left, wants to throw the football. Pass is going to be complete. I believe that's Murphy who has caught it up near the 37, call it the 38-yard line. A gain of close to nine. It'll bring up second down and short. Great position to be in, here in, in this situation, second and short. Uh, Campbell has a lot of opportunities. As, you know, could take a shot at it down the field. Uh, they could run a play-action pass, and uh, sometimes that creates an opening. 
Murphy now four catches and 37 yards, by far the leading receiver on the team so far today. 12-15 to go, fourth quarter. 6-3, Birmingham Southern with the lead now. Bellano working from under center. Second down and one. He wants to throw the football. He will out of the flat. That's Severance. Makes the catch at the 41. He's dropped there. That'll be good enough for the first down. A gain of close to three, maybe even four yards. Hit on the stop was Brad Stockdale, the sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. And it is a Campbell first down. Got a new set of downs. It gives the defense more time to rest. There's still a lot of football to play in this game. Milano receives the play call from the sideline. Now we'll head into the huddle and relay that call to his team. The sophomore transfer from the University of Connecticut has a chance on this drive to put Campbell back in front. Milano hands the ball off right side. That's Carl Smith. Open field, 50, 45, and down to the 44-yard line. Big game by Carl Smith. He continues to run hard, and he's picking up more and more as we've gone throughout this football game. Smith now 19 yards on that carry, 19 carries and 99 in the game. Carl did a great job. Uh, it was a power playoff tackle. Uh, the offensive line came off the ball. Uh, great job on, with the fullback on the uh, kickout block, and Carl was able to move on down the field. So 11-24 to go here in this fourth quarter. Campbell still trailing by three. Two receivers left. A wing back to the right. That is Kramer. They're going to head it off to Carl Smith. Another hole where he's able to squirt ahead for three yards before he's wrapped up by the defensive front for Birmingham Southern. It on the stop was Oren Olds, the junior from Adamsville. And it'll bring up second down and about seven as Carl Smith has now gone over 100 yards on the day with 102 on 20 carries. So Volano will go to the shotgun here with two backs in the backfield, one to either side of him. Three receivers in the formation, two to the left, one to the right. Second down at seven. Milano going to hand it off to Kramer. He has room, rumbles up to about the 40 for a gain of one, and then he is pushed back by the defensive front of Birmingham Southern. The charge was led by Patrick Thomas, a sophomore from Southside, Alabama. Campbell's in a four-down situation. They're at the 40-yard line inside the 40. They have two more downs. It's third and about five. They have two more downs to pick up the first. So third down. And call it officially six inside the 40-yard line of Birmingham Southern. Campbell down six to three here. Three receiver formation, two backs, Milano in the gun. Low snap, he picks it up, throws it across the middle. Caught one-handed by Severance. He hauled it in for a first down. Wow, what a catch by the little guy. At that wide receiver spot, he found a hole. The throw was zipped in there, but he was able to hang on to it with that one hand. That was a fantastic catch. Great throw. Uh, Severin's made an adjustment. Dove for the ball, thought it with one hand, pulled it in. It was one of the most athletic catches of today. 10 for 16 now, Volano. 86 yards after that six-yard hookup with Severin's. Volano under center. Kramer the back this time. A receiver each way. They're going to play action off Kramer. Volano's going to step up, throw the football again. Wide open is the tight end. Longmire, he falls forward inside the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. So Campbell finding success through the air. That's a gain of 14 yards and a Campbell first down. That's what happens when you have success running the football. It opens up the play action game. Certainly has. Kramer was expected to see snaps at tailback. He did there. They were able to play action off the big guy. Good pass protection from the running back. Milano able to find the open tight end across the middle, and that is the Campbell first down. So two receivers left on this possession, or on this set of downs. Running off late is going to be the tight end in Owens. And now a flag flies, and that'll be an illegal substitution. They broke the huddle with 12 guys and then ran a man off late. That'll be five yards against Campbell. And we'll have to wait and see here. No, they're going to wave it off. There's going to be no flag. Actually, that was very fortunate for Campbell. Um, unfortunately, we called timeout. Yeah, so Dale Steele uses a timeout here, and I believe it's his final one of the ball game. Campbell trailing Birmingham Southern 6-3, to three, back after this 30-second timeout on the Campbell University Radio Network. 
Campus Habitat is a premier student-only apartment complex located directly across from Campbell University. At Campus Habitat, you will find an apartment designed with your college experience in mind. Our apartments are available fully furnished and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. Timeout almost over for the Camels as we welcome you back to Barker Lane Stadium at Police Creek, North Carolina. Birmingham Southern 6. They're trying to spoil that, spoil that Campbell start of football in the first time in 58 years. The Camels with three. Six to three, your score. The Panthers with the lead. Two receivers left. Two tight ends. And the running back is Kramer with Volato under center, waiting to have from the official. First and 10 at the Birmingham Southern 19-yard line. Milano surveys the defense, now calls for the snap. He's going to roll left, wants to throw the football pass. is going to be just over the head of Murphy, who was open at the 10-yard line. Kelvin Murphy made a fantastic attempt, but it just skated off his fingertips. Tough throw, running to your left, uh, having to turn your body around and make that throw just a little high. So Volato now, 11 for 18 for an even 100 yards on the day. Campbell's got to find a way to score. They've been down here uh, a couple times in uh, this football game. They have not punched one in the end zone. The offense has got to do the job. So two receivers left, one to the right here. Volato in the shotgun. Carl Smith is back in. Volato calls for the snap. They hand it off to Smith. There's some room. He fell down on his way to making a cut at about the 16-yard line, so a gain of only three, but, boy, he had touchdown written all over it had he been able to maintain his footing. A little counterplay, misdirection, uh, had a great kick-out block by the pulling guard, and the hole was there, and fortunately he slipped and fell. So third down and seven now for Campbell University. Is out is Longmire, and in comes Kramer. Longmire with a big catch on this drive, but they need the blocking ability and the receiving ability of Kramer, who's been very versatile through practice at that fullback spot. Two receivers left as Campbell's going with a three-wide receiver formation. Two backs, one to either side of Milano in the gun. Milano drops, throws right, pass caught. Murphy at about the six-yard line before he is dropped on the play by the defensive secondary and Mitch Swanson for Birmingham Southern. Wow, what a nice hookup there for Campbell University. It'll be first down and goal at about the seven. Great catch, great throw. We have an injured uh, Birmingham Southern player. It's the uh, young man that made the tackle. Uh, it may be a good idea to go right back at that area with a uh, substitute and see what you can do. So it is Swanson who is shaken up on the play with 8.08 to go here this fourth quarter. So an opportunity for Campbell to take the lead here as Swanson is up and off the field and Campbell's going to go right back at it offensively. Sometimes as an offensive lineman, you've just got to just bear down and make things happen. First down and goal at the seven-yard line. Campbell heading in, trying to take the lead. Volano under center. Going to hand the football to Smith, who cuts it up, and then he is dropped at about the eight. So a loss of about one. Nice defensive play by defensive lineman John Bailey, the 250-pound freshman from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, made a nice stop got a lot of penetration too with linebacker Victor Allen. That was a slow developing stretch play. So to bring up second down at goal from about the eight yard line. 7.30 to go, rolling fourth quarter clock. Campbell down 6-3 to three to Birmingham Southern. First game in 58 years. Looking for the go ahead score here as Volano will drop into the gun. Three wide receivers and two backs. Milano calls for the snap. It was off his right shoulder. He picks it up, wants to throw the football. Now we'll tuck it under and run, and I believe we'll step out of bounds right at the eight. So he gained about a half a yard. And with 7.09 left, that'll stop the clock and bring up third down and goal. That play kind of blew up from the beginning. Uh, the snap was a little high, and, and uh, Matt Milano had to go find a football and took his eyes off the receiver, so the timing was not there. Big play here. Third down and goal from the Birmingham Southern 8. Gamble looking to take the lead here. They'll send three wide receivers into the formation. Longmire the tight end of the right and Carl Smith the back to Volano's left. The sophomore quarterback calls for the snap. 
picks it up, wants to throw, looks left, pass is going to be knocked down, but a flag will fly, and that will be interference in the end zone, and it will be first and goal for the Camels at the two. Could not have happened at a better time. A great, uh, great job by the receiver holding his space and making the defender come over the back. So that will be pass interference more than likely against Birmingham Southern. And actually, it'll be holding against Campbell, interestingly enough. That'll be declined. Well, the flag came from the secondary, and now they're going to say it's holding against the Camel. So they're going to decline it, bring up fourth down, and bring on Adam Willits, who's going to attempt the kick from 25 yards. He's one for one. He made the first kick of the day from 30. This one from the right hash. Snow to hold. The snap is down. The kick is on the way, and it is good. And Adam Willits has tied this ball game up at six. 6.40 to go, fourth quarter, back after this 30-second timeout of the Campbell University Radio Network. Are you building new or just trying to make the old look new and are shopping for the latest styles of carpet, ceramic, hardwood, laminate, or blinds? Southeastern Interiors at 228 Airport Road in Irwin is your one-stop shop for all your interior needs. With a full-time retail manager on staff, we have increased our selection as well as adding new lines, including a full line of vinyl blinds to help create a new look for your windows and doors. Stop by our showroom or give us a call at 910-893-8486. Visit us online at AcousticalSealing.com. Southeastern Interiors turning your ideas into reality. Welcome back to Barker Lane Stadium. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridgers live atop this artificial grass surface here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Campbell took an early 3 to nothing lead. Birmingham Southern has the only touchdown. They led 6-3, to three, but boy, a very impressive drive to tie ball game up at six apiece as Adam Willis, the freshman again, boots one through. This one from 25 yards away. It'll be Langston and Franklin back deep to receive for Birmingham Southern. They're moving from right to left. Kicking things off will be Adam Willits. Real important for Campbell to get field position here so that they can stop them and get the offensive uh, team back on the football with a short field. Milano has played very well, 13 to 20, 127 yards. He's been sacked four times, however. So here's Willits to kick things off here. With 6.40 to go in this fourth quarter, we're tied at six between Campbell and Birmingham Southern. And across the way, trying to get the wave started as Willits will hit a high end over end kick. They'll come down to Franklin at about his 21 yard line. He's going to cut it up across the far side of the field. Now he's got room to run, and he'll be brought down at the 35. So a nice return by Franklin of 15 yards. And with 6.28 left, that's where Birmingham Southern will start this drive. Not a bad job with the coverage team. The ball was kicked on the, uh, the short side of the field toward the sideline, and uh, the young man took the ball back across the middle, which is where you wanted him to go, and the defense kicking team was able to stop him. So now the defense needs to come up big here for Campbell University. They were given a nice little breather there by the offense. And now thick pin into the gun, four wide receivers set. And now thick pin will look to the sideline to change the play with eight seconds on the play clock. Now five as he steps back to take the snap. Four, and he'll get the snap with three. He's going to try to run the football right, cut it up, has all kinds of room. He's upended just shy of the first down at about the 45-yard line. So a good run by thick pin. Looked like he was hemmed in, but was able to find the seam. I think you're going to find Birmingham Southern is going to give that ball to Joe Thigpen because they have confidence that he can make a big play. So here it is, second down and one at the Campbell 45-yard line. 6.03 to go, rolling fourth quarter. We're tied at six. Thigpen going to send a man in motion. He's going to run the option to the right side, pitch it out right side. That is, I believe, Rodriguez who's tripped up, but not before he picks up the first down. He's going to go down near the 49-yard line. So call it a gain of close to four yards, and it'll be first down and ten for Birmingham Southern. The option has been the bread and butter. I think you'll see that a lot on this drive, and when uh, Joe Thickpen, you know, stretching the defense and looking for a seam and taking the ball up the field. So 5.50 to go. Birmingham Southern trying to put themselves into position to win this football game. 6-6 six, six your score, fourth quarter. Campbell a couple of field goals. Birmingham Southern missed an extra point after scoring a touchdown earlier in this fourth quarter. Big pin in the gun, first and ten. They send Franklin in motion. They're going to run the option, and Big Pin's going to be wrapped up, but not before he picks up two and three yards up near the Campbell 48. Somebody's lost in a hat. I believe that was the wide receiver, Tay Walker, for Birmingham Southern. 
but a gain of three for Thurkpin. It is now second down at seven. Looks like Campbell is taking their safeties and bringing them up on the option. Have to be real careful and make sure they don't run a receiver across the middle of the field. So three wide receivers to the left. One back, that is Arrington. And here's Thickpin again in the shotgun. Going to throw out here to the near side. That's Franklin going to cut it up, but not pick up much as he falls forward back near the original line of scrimmage. The defensive end, E.J. Rasko in on the stop. Great pursuit by the Campbell defense. And with 444 left, that'll bring up a possession down, third down, and call it close to seven yards. Officially, it'll be six. So, so here is a big, big down for Campbell University. We'll see what the defense can come up with here. Here's Thick Ben. Four man defensive front for Campbell. Thick Ben going to look over, get the play changed. With five seconds on the play clock, he has to hurry. Three, two, gets the snap with just one second remaining. Now he's going to step up, try to run the football. Now wants to throw it down the field. Pass is going to be complete, wide open at the 10. And into the end zone for a touchdown goes Luke Chapman. The freshman wide receiver got free behind the defensive secondary, and that makes it 12-6, Birmingham Southern. I think what happened in that situation, there was a little bit of a fake and hesitation by the quarterback. It froze the secondary, and the receiver kept running, and he got behind the Campbell secondary. So now that really puts the onus on the Campbell offense. And it's 12-6. to six. On to attempt the extra point is Spooner after Joseph missed the last extra point. From the hold of Jackson, the snap is down, the kick is on the way. This one is a high end-over-end kick, and it's no good. So Birmingham Southern misses another extra point, but they lead 12-6. to 6. Back with more after this 30-second break of the Campbell University Radio Network. Triangle Orthopedics, team physicians for the Fighting Camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. Robert Harper, Mickey Bridges, we're joined topside by Chris Bell, who's been doing a fine job keeping our staffs this afternoon. Campbell's first game at 58 years, and right now they trail 12 to 6 with 4.06 to go here in this fourth quarter. They will be getting the football after that 48 yard touchdown strike from Joe Thigpen to the freshman wide receiver, Luke Chapman. Chapman got loose behind the secondary, Mick, and he was able to haul it in, take his time, and walk into the end zone. Well, that's what happens when you when a team runs the option offense and you start having to bring your secondary up to play the pitch and the quarterback, and it creates some situations and it leaves the middle of the field open. And I think the defense got caught in an in-between and didn't know exactly what to do with the hesitation by the quarterback and uh, the receiver got behind. Washington and now Carl Smith back deep to receive the kick here. It is Big Penn who will be, excuse me, not Big Penn, but it is Spooner who will be kicking things away. Campbell hoping for good field position with 4.06 left. They need a touchdown to tie the extra point to take the lead here this fourth quarter. And this is a line drive kick that will drive Campbell's Washington all the way back to his own goal line. He's going to work right, try to cut it up, and he'll be dropped at the 10-yard line. So a little bit of confusion, but a big kick really uh, played into Birmingham Southern's hands there. I think that's exactly what happened. Spooner kicked the ball over the, uh, the the receivers' heads. They had to backpedal to get the ball. There was no blocking in front of them, and uh, Birmingham Southern had great coverage. So Campbell will get it first and 10 at their own 10. They're 90 yards away from tying this ball game up. Still plenty of time with 3.55 to go, fourth quarter. And it is going to be Matt Villano in the ball game as he has played this entire second half and has performed rather well. He's 12 for 19, 109 yards. He'll take the snap, hand it off to Carl Smith. Smith going to drag a tackler to the 15, maybe even the 16-yard line. Call it a gain of six, bring up second down and four, 3.45 to go fourth quarter. Campbell down 12 to six. 
Well, I think Campbell's got to mix it, uh, mix the play calling up. Uh, they got a long way to go. They can't panic. Uh, Sam Issa Moyer is at right tackle now. Two receivers left, one to the right. Smith to Volano's left in the shotgun. Volano's going to drop back. Look, steps up. He's under some pressure. He'll be dropped for a loss back at the 12-yard line. Good job of avoiding pressure initially, but the stop was made in the backfield by John Bailey, the freshman from Tuscaloosa, and Birmingham Southern is forced third down and long here, third and eight, as we near the three-minute mark of this fourth quarter. Campbell right now without a timeout left, so they've got to do a lot of work without being able to stop the clock. So third and eight here, Volano with three wide receivers to the left. Milano takes the snap, drops back, wants to throw the football. He does. Pass complete. First down yardage. Across the 20 and down to the 21-yard line. It's Kelvin Murphy again. Boy, he has been big time at that wide receiver slot. Has caught a number of passes, six of them now for 54 yards. Has been Milano's favorite target. And with 240 left, Campbell will move the chains. Milano again on the shotgun. Campbell down by six points with 2.30 left to go fourth quarter. Milano steps back, steps up, fires, and a pass is incomplete for Griffiths here on the far, on the near side. So it'll bring up second down at 10. And it stops the clock. Um, Coach Steele, they talked about it during the week, how he felt Kelvin Murphy was going to have a great game, and he was true to his word. Murphy's just got to find a way to get us in the end zone. So with 2.22 left, Campbell down by six at 12 to six. Jeremy Hill in the ballgame for the first time at right tackle. So Volano will huddle up, relays the play from the sideline to the 10 other men on the field. Campbell down by a touchdown, 12 to six. Volano takes the snap, looks left, wants to throw over the middle pass, is tipped at the last second by the linebacker Ross Cotney from Clay, Alabama. Had he not been able to get a handle on that football, Langmeyer would have had more than just a first down. But it brings up third and 10 with 2.18 left to go fourth quarter. Really haven't thrown to the tight ends much in this game, and he was open. Longmeyer has one catch in this contest for 14 yards. That was on Campbell's last scoring drive. But here now, third down at 10. Milano in the gun. Wants to roll right. Throws the football. It's intercepted here on the near side by Birmingham Southern's Brad Stockdale. And that will make it very, very difficult on the Camels now as Stockdale is dropped at the 28-yard line after picking off Milano's pass. That's the first turnover of the ball game for the Camels. Coming into the ball game, we knew Brad Stockdale was one of the better defenders for Birmingham Southern. Uh, he comes up with a great big play here in the fourth quarter. Campbell does not have any timeouts. This is a very difficult situation. Yep, it certainly is. And with that new rule, this uh, being the play clock starting at 40 seconds, as soon as the play is whistled down, Big Pin can all but sit on this thing at the moment as the clock will roll. After this snap, Thickpin takes it. He's going to roll right, cover it up, and he'll be dropped by Shine at the 30, so he lost about a yard. And now the clock rolling near two minutes to go for a quarter. Really surprised he didn't run it all the way down to about one or two seconds and just drop down and take a knee. So 153 to go, and Campbell down 12 to 6 to Birmingham Southern. 145 to go. The next snap will come at right around 120. Campus Habitat is a premier student-only apartment complex located directly across from Campbell University. At Campus Habitat, you will find an apartment designed with your college experience in mind. Our apartments are available fully furnished and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. Campbell could have you know, had a chance to win this football game. So now 60 seconds left to go, fourth quarter. 
Campbell down 12 to 6. Birmingham Southern has it third down and 17. They can run this thing all the way down under 45 seconds at pretty much all but in this game. Big Finn's going to take it. He's going to run left. He's going to catch up big hole and across the 30, the 25, and we'll go down at the 21, and that will end the football game. Birmingham Southern doesn't have to run another play. They will pick up a road win in Campbell's first game in 58 years. The play clock is off. And with 20 seconds remaining, all that is left is to sit and wait for the final buzzer. Birmingham Southern with a touchdown late in this fourth quarter. A 48-yard touchdown pass from Joe Thickben to the wide receiver Luke Chapman picks up the win. And for Eddie Garfinkel, a triumphant trip to North Carolina. But for Campbell University, a lot of folks have to be happy that football is back in the creek. We're going to step aside and take a break. When we come back, the Southeastern Interior's post-game report rolls your way here on the Campbell University Radio Network. McDonald's presents Confessions of a Fake Folk Fan. Don't judge me. I just really liked mochas. But soon I started wearing clogs and playing mandolin and dating lazy beatniks. But McDonald's McCafe mochas took me away from all that. Now I'm wearing synthetics and listening to hip-hop again. Thank you, McDonald's. McCafe mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos from McDonald's. With fresh ground espresso and real steamed milk, it's all the coffee, all the attitude. At participating McDonald's. New, innovative, state-of-the-art. Critical qualities necessary for being a business leader for over 60 years. Qualities you'll find at Williams Printing and Office Supply. Williams Printing stands out for its quality printing, the dedication to customers, and the reputation of high-quality printing. That's Heidi. She's with the design team at Williams Printing and Office Supply, where in-house and on time means something. Our design department understands the value of time and the importance of deadlines. Oh, and don't worry about quantity. Whether you need a small amount or a quantity in the thousands, we offer the most competitive solution. Williams Printing is all about customer service. You know what you want. They know how to deliver it. We offer custom graphic designs for all your projects. And do we mention front door parking at a team ready, willing, and able to take on your job? We are focused on meeting our customers' individual needs. Williams Printing and Office Supply. 1033 Bragg Boulevard, Fayetteville, just north of the MLK. Call 323-2220. Williams Printing and Office Supply. Just say yes. Are you building new or just trying to make the old look new and are shopping for the latest styles of carpet, ceramic, hardwood, laminate, or blinds? Southeastern Interiors at 228 Airport Road in Irwin is your one-stop shop for all your interior needs. With a full-time retail manager on staff, we have increased our selection as well as adding new lines, including a full line of vinyl blinds to help create a new look for your windows and doors. Stop by our showroom or give us a call at 910-893-8486. Visit us online at AcousticalSealing.com. Southeastern Interiors, turning your ideas into reality. Now, get set for a game recap on the Southeastern Interior's post-game report. Scores, highlights, and a visit in the locker room of the Fighting Camels, right here on the Campbell University Radio Network. The post-game report is brought to you in part by Carly C's IGA, Campus Habitat, Bojangles, Triangle Orthopedic Associates, McPhail's Pharmacy, Allstate Insurance and Agent Daryl Wilson, Southeastern Interiors, and Sunshine Car Care. Now, back to the field with the voice of the Fighting Camels, Robert Harper. We welcome you into the Southeastern Interiors post-game report. The Fighting Camels fall here in their first game at 58 years by a final of 12 to 6. Robert Harper and Mickey Bridgers top side here at Barker Lane Stadium in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. And the folks from Birmingham, Alabama, Mickey, are going to be going home happy. They scored all 12 of their points in the fourth quarter. Campbell had plenty of opportunities to put points on the board, but they just couldn't in this contest. But I think a lot of things you can build on as you head throughout the season. Absolutely. Uh, you're correct when you say that uh, Birmingham Southern scored all their points in the fourth quarter. They uh, really came you know, alive, especially in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, Joe Thigpen, the experienced quarterback, uh, took his team down the field, made big plays. Campbell's defense uh, played a great game. 
uh, you know, first college football game and for three quarters kept the opponent scoreless. The offense uh, at times looked good, run the misdirection in the short passing game. Just got to be a little more consistent and put the ball in the end zone. So Birmingham Southern wins it by a score of 12 to 6. We take a look now at your scoring summary. Campbell scored first, and that was all the scoring for a long, long time in this game. But with eight seconds to go in the first quarter, it was Adam Willits hitting a 30-yard field goal to cap a 14-play, 67-yard drive that lasts 7 minutes and 17 seconds. And Campbell holds that 3 nothing lead all the way to halftime and then all the way into the fourth quarter. And then with 12.58 to go in that fourth quarter, it was Birmingham Southern's quarterback, Joe Thigpen, from a yard out. He capped an 11-play, 82-yard drive with that touchdown plunge. The extra point was no good. Joseph missed it, and it was 6-3. to three. Campbell would immediately come right back, go on a 14-play, 63-yard drive that lasted 6 minutes and 10 seconds. Adam Willits again, this time from 25 yards out, and with 6.40 to go in the fourth quarter, we were once again tied at 6 apiece. And then with 4.06 left, really the big blow in this football game. It was only a five-play drive, but it covered 64 yards for two minutes and 22 seconds, and it was the freshman wide receiver, Luke Chapman, getting behind the Campbell defense, and it was Joe Thigpen putting one on the numbers for a 48-yard touchdown pass. That was the final score. Campbell's final drive came up short. The pass was intercepted, and the final score set at 12-6. to six. We're going to step aside and take a break. When we come back, we will get our... All-State Good Hands play of the game. We'll also name our player of the game when we return here on the Southeastern Interior's post-game report on the Campbell University Radio Network. Located in the heart of eastern North Carolina, the trophy case is the preferred custom trophy and award shop of the Fighting Camels. Each trophy is assembled with care and attention to detail is paid to each award, ensuring it conveys your pride of achievement. The trophy case also offers interior signage, custom engraving and artwork, and in-house embroidery. Stop by 125 North Wilson Street in Dunn or give us a call at 1-888-679-0958. 1-888-679-0958. The trophy case in Dunn is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. Campus Habitat is a premier student-only apartment complex located directly across from Campbell University. At Campus Habitat, you will find an apartment designed with your college experience in mind. Our apartments are available fully furnished and are newly renovated. To further simplify your life and gain the most from your college experience, call Campus Habitat at 910-893-4607. That number again is 910-893-4607. Campus Habitat, created with you in mind. We're driving fewer miles, eating out less, turning vacations into staycations. If this isn't a recession, it sure feels like one. And if you haven't looked for a lower price on car insurance, you're probably thinking about it. Careful. All state agents have seen other companies skimp on coverage to get the price down. Want to save money without cutting corners? Before you call anyone else, call an Allstate agent for a free good hands coverage checkup. It only takes a few minutes to see what protection you need. And it doesn't have to be expensive. People who switched to Allstate last year saved $353 on average. Just because you have insurance doesn't mean you're protected. That's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Get your free good hands coverage checkup. Call Lillington Allstate agent Daryl Wilson at 910-814-0055. Again, 910-814-0055. Are you in good hands? We welcome everyone back to Barker Lane Stadium at the Southeast of Interior's post-game report. The Campbells fall to Birmingham Southern by a final of 12-6. to Campbell just could not get a touchdown there in the final minutes to equalize the game and have a chance to pick up the victory. Time now to name our trophy case player of the ball game. Our player of the ball game is none other than freshman kicker Adam Willits. That was somewhat of a concern, Mickey, in the early part of the spring, but Willits showed no problems today. He booted him through from 30 and 25 yards, accounted for all six Campbell points, and, well, he certainly was uh, very, very impressive, to say the least, kicking the football for the Fighting Camels. He had two opportunities, and he made successful attempts on both and uh, did a great job. Uh, you know, Campbell's got to be able to score touchdowns to win football games, but it's nice to know that you've got a field goal kicker. Yep, certainly, and our All-State good hands play of the game is none other than Adam Willits as well as he put Campbell on the board for the first time in 58 years. On to attempt it from straight away at 30 yards. The kick is down, and it is on the way, and it is good. And Campbell has taken an early lead thanks to the foot of Adam Willits. And it is now 3 to nothing, Campbell 
And we'll be back after this timeout. On the so the Camels would take the lead by a score of three to nothing. That would stand up for a long, long time as the first points for Birmingham Southern wouldn't come until 12:58 to go in the fourth quarter. They would add another touchdown at the 4:06 mark of that fourth period. Your final score here from Barker Lane Stadium, 12 to six. But there are a lot of positives, as we mentioned, Mickey, that uh, Campbell University can build off of here. A lot of positives. Carl Smith had 111 yards uh, rushing on 23 attempts. Uh, Matt Villano, uh completed approximately 60% of his passes, 14 out of 24. So he, uh, you know, some po real positives on offense. The offensive line did a good job. Just got to be able to do a, a little better job and improve next week. Defensively, I thought Campbell played a great game defensively and held the opponent to 12 points and did not score until the fourth quarter. Fans, Southeastern Interiors has everything you could need to make that remodel job or new build something spectacular. From the latest styles of carpet, ceramic, hardwood, laminate, and blinds, Southeastern Interiors has it all. Stop by 228 Airport Road in Irwin or call 910-893-8486. That's 910-893-8486. Southeastern Interiors, turning your dreams into reality and hoping the fighting camels reach theirs. So we're going to step aside and take a break here on the Southeastern Interiors postgame report. When we come back, Devin Schwartz will take you for two segments of scores and updates from across the country. I know there's been one big upset in Blacksburg and maybe some more brewing across the country, so we ask you to stay tuned right here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Did you know that regular oil changes will only add miles to your engine? That's right. Changing your engine oil regularly will help lubricate the engine, minimize friction, and carry away excessive heat, all of which will lead to greater fuel efficiency. Stop by Sunshine Car Care in Lillington today to get your oil checked and learn what else you can do to increase your fuel mileage. Sunshine Car Care, 1643 North Main Street, Lillington, 910-893-8374. Sunshine Car Care in Lillington is a proud supporter of the Fighting Camels. For over 25 years, McPhail's Pharmacy has served Campbell University and our surrounding communities with the professional care and comfort that you have come to expect from our team of dedicated professionals. McPhail's Pharmacy, located in the Forest Hill Shopping Center in Lillington or 105 East H Street in Irwin, combines quality, dependability, and state-of-the-art systems in order to bring you the best in pharmaceutical services. Please stop by and see us at one of our two convenient locations or visit us online at McPhailsPharmacy.com. Triangle Orthopedics, Team Physicians for the Fighting Camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. Are you building new or just trying to make the old look new and are shopping for the latest styles of carpet, ceramic, hardwood, laminate, or blinds? Southeastern Interiors at 228 Airport Road in Irwin is your one-stop shop for all your interior needs. With a full-time retail manager on staff, we have increased our selection as well as adding new lines, including a full line of vinyl blinds to help create a new look for your windows and doors. Stop by our showroom or give us a call at 910-893-8486. Visit us online at AcousticalSealing.com. Southeastern Interiors turning your ideas into reality. Welcome. And welcome to the Sunshine Park Air Studio. I'm Devin Swartz. After 58 years, the Campbell Fighting Camels dropped the weight yet another week to get a win in football as they go down and defeat 12 to 6 to the Birmingham Southern Campbells. Later on, the Sunshine and Carriers post team report stay tuned for a live interview with the coach, Dave Steele. But in the meantime, let's keep you caught up on everything going on in the world of college football. Starting off in the Pioneer League, we will actually go all the way back to Thursday night, the first game in Pioneer League of 2008. Chris Creighton got his first win in his first game as head coach of the uh, Drake Bulldogs, defeating up Iowa 17 to 13. The Bulldogs started off quite sluggish, trailing 10 nothing in the first 20 minutes and only picking up two first downs. But two defensive plays in the second quarter woke up the Bulldogs. Tim Harvey's interception led to Drake's first touchdown. Spencer Katie performed a very rare feat, stripping the ball from a punter. That play led to a touchdown two plays later and a 14-10 lead at the half a lead they never relinquished on route to a 17-13 win. The Pioneer League game was also played last night. San Diego ran the football championship subdivision's longest home winning streak to 25 games with a 40-22 victory against future PFL member Marist at Guerrero Stadium. First-year quarterback Seth Trujillo threw four touchdowns in his first collegiate start, completing 16 of 23 passes for 191 yards. 
receiver running back J.T. Rogan caught the game's first touchdown. The 29-yard catch, but would leave the game due to an injury later in the first quarter and did not return. And now for today's action in the Pioneer League, Birmingham Southern and Campbell was the only early afternoon game, and you heard it right here on the Campbell University Radio Network. Unfortunately, the first game of 58 years was not too kind to the Fighting Camel faithful as they lost 12-6 to to the Panthers, but you will get to hear from Coach Steele in just a few minutes. I'm certain he has some positive things to say about the contest as well. Later today, the Jacksonville Dolphins go on the road to play Savannah State. Kickoff actually was about five minutes ago. Savannah State is a Division I FCS independent. Dolphins are 3-7 and seven in the previous season openers, including losses in their last five season openers. J.U. will open the season with a new quarterback, sophomore Eric Steppleton, will make his first start at SSU after a season behind starter Chris Horton. However, the Dolphins will see senior defensive back Robson Noel return after posting a school record 80 tackles last season. And in the nightcap, more head state for NAIA for uh, foe Southern Virginia at 7 p.m. The Eagles return 12 starters from last season's squad, including senior cornerback David Hyland, the reigning NCAA Division I FCS interceptions leader, who was named first team preseason All-America by College Sporting News after nabbing his third team preseason recognition from the Sports Network. MSU will also feature a new starting quarterback in 2008, a return to leading rusher and leading receiver Jared Pendleton and Nick Feldman, respectively. There is one Sunday game on the Pioneer League schedule. The Dayton Flyers will take on NAIA member Central State University at 5 p.m. tomorrow. But Dayton will be the visitor on its own field. The game is part of an annual fundraiser for the Central State Athletics Department called the Dayton Classic Four. The contest will be the first for Rick Chamberlain, Dayton's new head coach, who inherits a team that returns only eight starters from last season that won a share of PFL regular season title and won the Gridiron Classic. The Flyers' biggest question mark resides on the offensive side of the ball where only two starters return, and both those starters are linemen. Quickly, we'll get things started with the B1 Bowl Subdivision and the AP Top 25. In progress right now, just three games. Number one, Georgia, over top of Georgia Southern, 38-14. to In the fourth quarter, number five, Florida, routing Hawaii 56-3. to And in the fourth quarter, just as Robert Harper was mentioning just a few minutes ago, another Top 25 team in trouble. Number 25, Pitt, is killing the Bowling Green, 27-17. to Now on to finals. Start off with number two, Ohio State, who opened the season with a 43 0 route of overmatched Youngstown State, but the victory was tampered by a leg injury to Heisman Trophy prospect Chris Beanie Wells. The star tailback was hurt in the third quarter after taking a handoff from Todd Beckman on first and goal at the Youngstown State 2. His feet slipped underneath them as he planned to make the cut, with the ball rolling free as he hit the turf. Wells was helped off the field and later returned to the bench in the fourth quarter, wearing a blue boot on his right foot. Before the injury, Wells ran for 111 yards, including a 43-yard touchdown run. Beckman caused two touchdown passes, and freshman quarterback Enon Terrell Pryor looked solid in his college debut. Number 7, LSU. Routed Appalachian State 41-13. Uh, LSU scored 17 points in its first three series to give the Tigers that victory over Appalachian State. We'll actually come back and talk about how the details of that went, as well as the rest of the top 25 upcoming games and local scores as well. This is the Southeastern Interior's Coast Game Report on the Campbell University Radio Network. Carly C's IGA has always been a proud supporter of Campbell University and the Fighting Camels. But Carly C's IGA is also proud of all 12 of its hometowns. From Lillington to Fayetteville, from Spring Lake to Benson, Carly C's IGA has always been the store big enough to serve you, yet small enough to know you. We have always and will continue to bring you the biggest name brands at the lowest possible prices. Stop by one of our 12 locations and see why we always say Carly C's IGA is hometown proud. New, innovative, state-of-the-art, critical qualities necessary for being a business leader for over 60 years. Qualities you'll find at Williams Printing and Office Supply. Williams Printing stands out for its quality printing, the dedication to customers, and the reputation of high-quality printing. That's Heidi. She's with the design team at Williams Printing and Office Supply, where in-house and on time means something. Our design department understands the value of time and the importance of deadlines. Oh, and don't worry about quantity. Whether you need a small amount or a quantity in the thousands, we offer the most competitive solution. Williams Printing is all about customer service. You know what you want. They know how to deliver it. We offer custom graphic designs for all your projects. And do we mention front door parking at a team ready, willing, and able to take on your job? We are focused on meeting our customers' individual needs. Williams Printing and Office Supply. 
1033 Bragg Boulevard, Fayetteville, just north of the MLK. Call 323-2220. Williams Printing and Office Supply. Just say yes. Let's face it, meal time can be anything but relaxing with the kids around. Why not give yourself a break and bring the gang to Western Sizzlin? We love kids, which is why Western Sizzlin makes it a priority to have tons of kids' meal options. Oh, and steak lovers, Western Sizzlin serves nothing but the best. USDA choice. Western Sizzlin, 1810 West Cumberland Street in Dunn. And just think, after you've enjoyed your meal, the mess is on our house. And it's done sports back here in the uh, Sunshine Car Care Studios as the Campbell Fighting Camels will have to wait another win, a week to get a win as they go down to beat 12-6 to the Birmingham Southern Panthers as we continue on the Southeastern Interior's postgame report and scores across the country. Told you before it's a break there about LSU routing Appalachian State 41-13. Now here come the details. Number 7 LSU scored 17 points on its first three series to give the Tigers that victory. Charles Scott rushed for a career-high 160 yards on 16 carries and scored two touchdowns. LSU coach Les Miles finally answered the question of who his starting quarterback would be when Harvard transfer Andrew Hatch took the field at the beginning of the game. Red Star freshman Jarrett Lee also got a chance to run the show and both threw their first touchdown passes as Tigers today. With Hurricane Gustav moving into the Gulf of Mexico, kickoff was moved from 4 o'clock to 10 a.m. Central Time, so the game would end well before authorities planned to initiate one-way traffic along major evacuation routes and away from Louisiana's coast. Number 13, Wisconsin needed a pair of third-quarter scores to shake free from a pesky Akron team for a 38-17 victory in Saturday's season opener. Leading by only a touchdown at halftime, Wisconsin forced Akron to punt from its own goal line on its first possession and took over near midfield. Hill broke free for a 34-yard run and later plunged into the end zone on fourth and goal from the one-yard line to put Wisconsin ahead 24-10. Hill, mean P.J. Hill, ran for 210 yards and two touchdowns, giving him a second career game of more than 200 yards rushing. Hill gained more than 1,200 yards in each of his first two seasons with the Badgers, despite nagging injuries. T.J. Lee blocked a punt and returned at 27 yards for a touchdown with 152 left to help East Carolina stun number 17 Virginia Tech 27-22. The Hokies, long known for excellence on defense and special teams, seemed to have control of the game thanks to Stephen Virgil's 30-yard fumble return for a touchdown and his two-point conversion off a blocked extra point. But it was the Pirates who came up with the big plays on defense and special teams in the end, scoring the game's final 15 points and continuing the program's recent turnaround under Coach Skip Holtz. Joe Paterno tied Florida State's Bobby Bowden atop the career wins list for major college coaches after number 22 Penn State routed Coastal Carolina 66-10 on Saturday. Both Hall of Fame coaches now have 373 career wins apiece. The Seminoles don't open their season until next weekend. Evan Royster ran for three touchdowns and 64 yards for Penn State against the championship subdivision Chanton Clears, while Derek Williams had an 89-yard kickoff return for a score to help the Nittany Lions one win their seventh straight season opener. Trent Usher provided Coastal Carolina's lone touchdown on a 33-yard reception. And the slow games still upcoming today. Two games tipped off about 15 minutes ago. Not come in for those games yet. Southern Cal taking on Virginia. Southern Cal ranked third in the country. And also WBU eight, uh, ranked eighth in the country taking on Villanova. Those games, as I said, just kicked off moments ago. At 6 o'clock, number 16, Brigham Young takes on Northern Iowa. And then a slew of games coming up tonight at 7 o'clock in the AP Top 25. Number 4, Oklahoma takes on Chattanooga. Number 10, Auburn takes on Louisiana Monroe. Number 11, Texas hosts Florida Atlantic. Number 12, Texas Tech takes on Eastern Washington. Number 14, Kansas will host Florida International. And number 19, South Florida takes on Tennessee Martin. All those games at 7 o'clock tonight. There are a couple of games to put two top 25 teams against each other tonight. Starting at 8 o'clock, number 9, Clemson, takes on number 24, Alabama, at the Georgia Dome. And at 8.30 p.m., number 6, Missouri, takes on number 20, Illinois, at the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Two games at 10 o'clock tonight, number 15, Arizona State, takes on Northern Arizona. And at 10 o'clock, also number 21, Oregon, takes on Washington. And now with scores in the ACC, we'll actually go back to... Thursday night to switch up for the entire conference scene. Number 23, Wake Forest defeated Baylor 41-13. There's Miami of Florida beating Charleston Southern 52-7. Georgia Tech defeated Jacksonville State 41-14. And South Carolina routed NC State 34-0 again. Those scores from Thursday night. Moving up to today, we already mentioned the USC-Virginia contest. That kicked off 15 minutes ago. And 
that basically happened just a minute ago. Maryland kicked off against Delaware. Tonight at 6 o'clock, North Carolina will take on McNeese State. At 7 o'clock, Duke will take on James Madison. And at 7.30, Boston College will go on the road to play Kent State. Alabama Clemson, as we mentioned, also an ACC contest coming up tonight at 8. Scores of local interest, just to reiterate, East Carolina with the upset of the day, 27-22 over Virginia Tech. And then we go to LSU and Appalachian State. LSU routing Appalachian State 41-13. Finally, Elon College will take on the Richmond Spiders at 7 o'clock tonight. And that will do it for the Sunshine Clark Care scoreboard. Coming up next, we'll send it back to Booze Creek, where Robert Harper talks live with Campbell head coach Dave Steele as the Campbell Fighting Camels lose to Birmingham Southern 12-6. This is the Southeastern Interior's Post Air Report on the Campbell University Radio Network. I'm Devin Swartz. We'll see you then. Time now for the Carly C's IGA pregame talk with head coach Dale Steele. Here is the voice of the Fighting Camels, Robert Harper, with Coach Dale Steele. Are you building new or just trying to make the old look new and are shopping for the latest styles of carpet, ceramic, hardwood, laminate, or blinds? Southeastern Interiors at 228 Airport Road in Irwin is your one-stop shop for all your interior needs. With a full-time retail manager on staff, we have increased our selection as well as adding new lines, including a full line of vinyl blinds to help create a new look for your windows and doors. Stop by our showroom or give us a call at 910-893-8486. Visit us online at AcousticalSealing.com. Southeastern Interiors turning your ideas into reality. Triangle Orthopedics, Team Physicians for the Fighting Camels, is the region's premier orthopedic specialty practice. Triangle Orthopedics has offices in 12 locations across the Triangle, covering six counties, Wake, Durham, Chatham, Granville, Orange, and Person. Triangle Orthopedic has the best trained physicians available in general and specialty orthopedics, rehabilitation, as well as urgent care centers in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. TriangleOrtho.com. Triangle Orthopedic, a tradition of excellence. Are you building new or just trying to make the old look new and are shopping for the latest styles of carpet, ceramic, hardwood, laminate, or blinds? Southeastern Interiors at 228 Airport Road in Irwin is your one-stop shop for all your interior needs. With a full-time retail manager on staff, we have increased our selection as well as adding new lines, including a full line of vinyl blinds to help create a new look for your windows and doors. Stop by our showroom or give us a call at 910-893-8486. Visit us online at AcousticalSealing.com. Southeastern Interiors turning your ideas into reality. Welcome everyone back to the Southeastern Interior's post-game report. Robert Harper now joined by the head coach for the Fighting Camels, Dale Steele. And coach, obviously not the results you wanted. You really, I thought, dominated play for three quarters of the football game. That fourth quarter they got hot offensively. Talk a little bit about this day overall for your team. What's it mean to come out here and play and to really play so well for three quarters? Well, I think that our effort was outstanding. I really, uh, I, I can't fault the effort that they've given us. It was, it was absolutely magnificent. They gave us everything they had, and they left everything on the field today. Uh, we made some errors, uh, some of them uh, that we shouldn't have made. Uh, you know, we had a had a mistake uh, by a young player who, uh, when a quarterback scrambled, he he popped up on the ball and and uh, uh, you know was was out of position to make the play on the throw. Uh, you know, just uh, we we make we throw an interception late in the game. Uh, those things are, uh, you know, are things that, that we need to we need to learn to finish. Coach uh, Carl Smith had a nice day, over 100 yards rushing. I thought Matt Milano up until that very last play had played really really well for your football team. Uh, you, you had some opportunities offensively, you just weren't able to take advantage of. I know you're going to look at that in practice and, and sure those things up for next week. Yeah, you know, we we need to get seven points down here initially uh, in in this type of football game, and then uh, you know. Um, the margin for error for us offensively is so small. If we get behind the eight ball, it's just difficult for us to overcome. And everything that we saw today is correctable. It was not; they were not effort mistakes. Uh, we'll correct the mistakes that we had. Uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned you when you get down in that opportunity to score, you want to come away with seven. But if you can't, you want to find a guy that can knock it through the uprights. I think you did that today. Adam Willis had, had a fantastic day as we get set ready to talk to him. Adam has really improved. He, he came in today and uh, you know tied the ball game up for us in a crucial situation, made the kicks when he had to, and and that's an important thing. He's he's got a very strong leg. He's worked very hard this summer to become a good player, and uh, you know he's going to do nothing but get better for us. Well, thanks a lot, Coach. Look forward to talking to you before next week's ball game. Thanks. There you go. That's the head coach for the Fighting Camels, Dale Still. We're now joined by Adam Willits, our 
player of the game, Adam, two for two on field goals. What, what goes through your mind when you're out there and you know that you have to make a kick, especially for the first points in Campbell football history and then to tie the ball game for another clutch fourth quarter situation? First of all, it's a privilege to be out there. And, and all the 11 guys out there working their butts off to get down the field, you know, I've, I've got to come through for them as hard as I have one job, and that's to put it through the uprights. So. Let's talk about that first kick. Uh, I know that everyone's anticipating those first points. It took a while to get an opportunity to get them on the board, but uh, we'll go through your mind, 30-yard kick and uh, an opportunity to give Campbell the lead. Uh, it was just, I had to, they worked their butts off to get down the field, and I was uh, excited to do it. You know, I hate that it's unfortunate we couldn't get in the end zone, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Obviously unable to get the win today, but I know you guys are going to look forward to Monday and Tuesday, get out here and get ready for Methodist, an opportunity to get a win next week. Yes, sir. Uh, hopefully we can get out here, work two times harder, and, I mean, the effort was great today. We just couldn't get in the end zone enough times, and uh, we'll work hard and be back out here next week and uh, do what we got to do. There you go. That's our player of the game, Adam Willis. Kicked field goals from 30 and 25 yards, accounted for all six Campbell points. We certainly appreciate it. Look forward to, to next week, and hopefully a Campbell win then. Thank you so much. There you go. That is Adam Willis. We're going to step aside and take a break here on the Southeast of the Tears postgame report. When we return, more comments from the stadium here on the Campbell University Radio Network. We're driving fewer miles, eating out less, turning vacations into staycations. If this isn't a recession, it sure feels like one. And if you haven't looked for a lower price on car insurance, you're probably thinking about it. Careful. All state agents have seen other companies skimp on coverage to get the price down. Want to save money without cutting corners? Before you call anyone else, call an Allstate agent for a free good hands coverage checkup. It only takes a few minutes to see what protection you need, and it doesn't have to be expensive. People who switched to Allstate last year saved $353 on average. Just because you have insurance doesn't mean you're protected. That's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Get your free good hands coverage checkup. Call Lillington Allstate agent Daryl Wilson at 910-814-0055. Again, 910-814-0055. Are you in good hands? Bojangles knows tailgaters. Before you even get to the game, there can be a vicious throwdown. Everybody fighting over what to get, how much to get. That's why Bojangles, home of the original and best tailgate special, has expanded their lineup so there's plenty of options. Starting lineup, the original tailgate special. Eight pieces of Cajun fried chicken, two picnic-sized fixins, four made from scratch buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of iced tea. Or upsize to the Super Tailgate Special. Twelve pieces of chicken, three picnic-sized fixins, six buttermilk biscuits, and a half gallon of tea. Still not enough? Let's call in the big guy. The new Jumbo Tailgate Special. Twenty pieces of Cajun fried chicken, four picnic-sized fixins, a dozen made-from-scratch biscuits, and a gallon of iced tea. And if you like your chicken off the bone, there's the Supreme Tailgate Special that includes twelve whole-breast tenderloin fillets. The great debate over where the tailgate is over. Everybody can agree on Bojangles. It's more than delicious. It's tradition. Robert Arbor, Mickey Bridgers, live at Barker Lane Stadium. Just about set to wrap up this broadcast. But so before we do that, a little bit more talk about what happened here today. Campbell Falls to Birmingham Southern by a score of 12-6, to six. but Mickey, coach obviously down, Adam Willits, and then all the players obviously wanting to come out here and win this first game, but still a very nice effort. Coach really liked the effort. They did some good things offensively, had a back go over 100 yards in the first game in Campbell football history, at least in the last 58 years. There are some things you can build on heading into next week for Methodist. A lot of positives out here today, Robert. Uh, offensively, Carl Smith with 111 yards rushing, Matt Villano with a 137 yards passing, Kevin Murphy with seven catches for 68 yards. Defensively, a lot of intensity, uh, shut out for three quarters, maybe got a little tired there in the fourth quarter, stayed on the field too much in the first half. Uh, the the um, extra point uh, field goal, uh, Adam Willits with two field goals. There's a lot of potential there. There's a, just a great day. You know, it could have been capped off with a great win. It uh, didn't happen, but there's always something to build on. You always seem to make a lot of improvement between the first game and the second game. Taking a look now real quickly at the final numbers, obviously Birmingham Southern winning on the scoreboard. They also had more total yards offensively. 15 first downs. Campbell had 16 in the contest, a lot of those coming in the second half. They moved the ball pretty well in the second half at times, did the Camels. Passing yards uh, for 
uh, Birmingham Southern, only 7 of 11 for 105 yards, but 48 of them coming on that touchdown strike that eventually won the football game. For Campbell, 15 of 26, one interception at 144 yards through the air. Rushing 45 times for Birmingham Southern, 194 yards on the ground. That is a very nice game. 37 carries for Campbell, 80 yards, but a lot of those yards lost were because of sacks given up by that offensive line, five of them. In fact, total plays for Birmingham Southern, 56 plays, where they gained 299 yards. Campbell, 63 plays, seven more than Birmingham Southern ran, but for only 224 yards. Punting in the ball game, four punts for Birmingham Southern, average 32 and a half yards per punt. Campbell, seven punts, 29.3 their average. They did have one of those punts blocked, however, for a loss of 10 yards. Time of possession, 28 minutes, 43 seconds for the Panthers. Campbell, 31 minutes and 17 seconds of possession time. Third down efficiency, really the problem. Campbell, 4 for 15 in the game. Birmingham Southern, not much better, 5 for 12. But still, if you pick up a few more first downs here and there on some possessions downs, give yourself some shorter fields to go, uh, maybe the results are a little bit different on the scoreboard. Taking a look real quickly at individual numbers, Birmingham Southern, it was backup tailback David Langston leading the way on the ground. Nine carries, 70 yards. He averaged nearly eight yards per carry. Joe Thigpen, the quarterback, 16 carries, 53 yards, and a touchdown. That touchdown came at the beginning of the fourth quarter, averaged nearly three and a half yards per pop. And it was their wide receiver, Michael Franklin, with 10 carries for 41 yards, averaging four, one, four yards per carry. Williams also with a carry, but uh, just 15 yards on that wide receiver end around. Joe Thigpen, 7 of 11, 105 yards and a touchdown, a 48-yard touchdown strike to Luke Chapman. That was his only catch of the day. Tay Walker, three catches, 38 yards. Rodriguez, one catch, 12 yards.